I'm really excited to have you join us this afternoon to learn more about BCIT. So before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that BCIT campuses are located on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, which includes the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil nations. As you can see, this edition of Big and Vote is being broadcast virtually to make it possible for us to reach the broadest audience possible in the current environment that we're in. And before we dive into the agenda for this afternoon, I thought I would talk a bit about the learning environment here at BCIT. So at BCIT, we are committed to the success of all of our students. And it's important that students have access to all of the tools that they need for success. Our academic programming and complementary student services are here to support your well-being and development so you can reach and even succeed in all of your goals. At BCIT, we want you to thrive, not only in your personal life, but throughout your life. So in the next little while, you'll, you'll hear a little bit about uh, what some of those tools for success are. So let's quickly go through the agenda for this uh, late afternoon. So first up, um, my team from Student Success will be able to speak to the support services available to BCIT students. At 5.30, Health Sciences will give an overview of the incredible opportunities they have available, which have been particularly relevant over the past couple of years. At 6.30, we'll hear from Business and Media, who will showcase their programs. And then at 7.30, we'll hear from International Services and all the great supports that they offer. And note that throughout their presentations, you'll be able to ask questions through the chat function. And when asking those questions, we suggest letting us know if you're a domestic or international student so we can ensure that we're giving you all the correct answers. So before I pass it off to our presenters for the evening, I'd like to speak to our approach to the student experience at BCIT. We absolutely understand that life exists outside of school for all of us, and it's important that all of your needs are met so that you can be successful both inside and outside of the classroom. Programming at BCIT provided through all of our services is approached from a holistic perspective using the eight dimensions of well-being, which are shown on the screen, which support student wellness while you're in school. So whether you're looking for some um, physical well-being or financial well-being or really anything in between, we have something to address those needs. And with that, I'd like to introduce Sarah Lando, the Entry and Transitions Coordinator in the Student Life Office, to talk more about student success at BCIT. Over to you, Sarah. Wonderful. Laura, thank you so much for the warm introduction. So to start off, I would like everyone to really think about what they are most curious about. So what are you most curious about when it comes to student services and supports at BCIT? And I'd actually like for you to take your phone and scan the QR code in the next slide and just provide an answer. Um, it could be a phrase, it could be anything to do with what you're curious about at BCIT. So I'm gonna give you a moment to do that, just to scan that QR code and put anything that comes to mind, what you would like to know more about, and we can try to address it during this presentation. Okay, great. So right now I am seeing housing, counseling services, volunteer opportunities, um, financial aid, um, the gym. Okay, well, we are definitely going to address a lot of these different topics in the presentation. Let's just see if there's some more. Um, schedule choices. We have some academic advisors um, today who can answer some questions that are maybe about more program specific questions. But as Laura mentioned, there's going to be more of a deep dive um, in presentations about specific programs. Great. Financial aid again. Um, counseling services again, and, and more in terms of what, what BCIT offers. So that's really awesome. We're definitely gonna get into that in the presentation. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, so it is my pleasure to um, announce that Krista, Associate Director of Student Life, is gonna moderate a student panel with BCIT students and ask them some questions about their experience at BCIT. So I'm gonna hand it off to Krista. Thanks so much, Sarah. And I'll ask our um, students to come on the screen. So turn on your cameras um, and join me here. 
And um, what better way for you to learn a little bit about student success than to hear directly from our students and our student leaders on campus. Um, so I'm pleased that we have um, three student leaders here with us today. We're gonna answer some of my questions about the student experience. And so um, I'll, call, I'll call on you to introduce yourselves. I'd like you to share who are you? So what's your name? What program and stage of your studies are you in? And just for something interesting, what's your favorite place on a BCIT campus? Um, so Cody, you're on my screen, so I'll call, I'll call on you first. Sure, all right. Hi everyone, my name is Cody. I'm in my third year here in the Bachelor of Civil Engineering program at BCIT. My favorite spot on campus, I have to say at the moment, it's the new pavilion upgrade in any one but I think that will very quickly be replaced with the new health and sciences building once it's open. Great, thank you, Cody. Um, next up, we have Yasmin. Please come on and introduce yourself and share a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my name is Yasmin. I'm a first year student. I'm studying finance at BCIT. I think my favorite place at BCIT right now would be the SE6 building. Uh, specifically the Telus Theater. It's my favorite place to be. I don't know why. That's great. Thank you. And finally, we have Shala. Hello. Thank you for having me also. Um, my name is Shala. Um, I'm in the Radio Arts and Entertainment program. And this is my second year. So I'm excited. Um, and my favorite spot would be the SE2, the Student Association Building. I think that building is definitely a cool place to find ways to socialize. So I definitely like that place. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, so we're starting out with a question and I'm gonna pose this question to Yasmin. What do you remember most about starting at BCIT? So thinking back on those first few days on campus, what sticks in your mind? Um, honestly, starting at BCIT, um, I was super lost when I first started. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't know how to study. I didn't know how to manage my time or just generally how to adapt to BCIT workload. It was definitely a new experience, but um, I noticed that I was struggling a lot. So I just started asking for help from my instructors who have done it before, who have seen other students do it before and go through it. And I listened to them. I actually applied their advice to my own habits. So the support that I actually received from BCIT was amazing. So looking back, I would say the most important thing that I remember from starting at BCIT would be how much I actually grew as a person in a short span of only three months and how much of my own potential I, I, I actually discovered. And I'm super grateful for that to BCIT. Thank you so much. Um, next up is a question for Cody. Tell me about one person you have met at BCIT who's made a difference in your studies and in your life. Sure. It's, um, it's kind of funny because most of the people that come to my mind are not really people that I would have met if I just solely studied here at BCIT. Um, there are many individuals that I can speak of, but okay, how about one? Um, Marita. Marita is the business development manager for the School of Construction and Environment, and I met her through a club that I was in. She honestly makes me feel special. She's always sending me links and opportunities that she thinks that I would enjoy here at BCIT. And she's always super happy to connect me with the right person if, um, if I ever needed help. So that's one person. Great, thanks Cody. That's a nice connection. I'm happy that you have folks looking out for you on campus. Um, next question is for Shala. Tell me about a challenge you have faced during your studies. How did you face it? Um, that's a very good question. Thank you for posing it. Um, I would say my biggest challenge this year would have been, um, so I got into a car accident, so I have a concussion. So that was a big thing for me trying to figure out if I still wanted to come to school, how I had to, you know, um, manage my schoolwork and also working at BCIT. So um, it was very good that I had the opportunity to have access to accessibility services to give me direction and pointers on how to manage my workload and how to manage also just being um, okay with um, 
not feeling burnt out and feeling at ease with managing everything that I had. So I think um, it was very good that accessibility services is there for us, the students. Thanks so much. Um, Cody, I think you you can maybe answer this question too. Um, so what challenges have you faced and what supports and services um, have you accessed to help you out during those times? Yeah, for sure. Um, I failed a course in my first year and that was really difficult on me because I was holding it myself at such a high standard. So I spoke with a lot of, of the people that I knew here at BCIT and I shared how I was feeling and they helped me realize something. Going part-time is just one extra year of my life and it took a lot of stress off of me and allowed me to explore more opportunities offered here at BCIT. So suddenly I found myself more engaged and I also started to utilize the free peer tutoring service offered through the library. And it was kind of funny because the irony is that it, initially I felt that I just didn't have the time to go to tutoring, but now it's actually saved me so much time. Great, thanks so much. I'm happy to hear that peer tutoring has been so helpful. Um, to the other panelists as well, are there any other services or supports you've used at BCIT that have helped you out through your time? Please feel free to jump in. Um, maybe I can jump in with this one. I would say a big service that has helped me and um, sometimes it makes me emotional because I am a big supporter of the counseling services. So I'm definitely promoting it as often as I could because there's a man named Kurt Shelton that works at BCIT and he has helped me. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, so sorry, but he has helped me immensely throughout the last um, almost like six months, I would say. So he's a big support. And I feel like if anybody needs support, um, he would, well, I feel like every counselor at BCIT would be good, but he was somebody that I genuinely feel like I connected with and he helped me a lot to figure out what I needed to do and see clearly and to go with um, my gut because I think sometimes we um, doubt ourselves and he really helped me realize that I just have to be me at all times and I think that if I ever do get to meet Kurt, I will be the happiest woman because he has helped me immensely. And I hope that anybody that gets the opportunity to even just pop by or have a chance to talk to a counselor whenever you feel down or you want some positive um, feedback about something that you feel like you're struggling about or you want to actually achieve, I feel like it would be um, a great opportunity because the services are there for you. And I think if they're available, just take up like they take the opportunity because clearly he's done <laughs> he's done great things, you know. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing that, Shella. Yeah, the virtual and in-person um, counseling services are one that many BCIT students use, and we really appreciate you sharing about your experience of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I mean, this is a question for you. BCIT BCIT programs are quite demanding. How do you stay healthy and well during your studies? So um, I do emphasize on having a great support system here at BCIT, but at the end of the day, you're going to be the only person who's going to move you forward. So it's very important to invest time in yourself. Um, I know that we all have to put in the long hours, but you need to dedicate a few hours to have something outside of school to like um, just change it, to just give you a change of mental um, to give you a change of mental state, um, it, it, you need a restart. You need something that helps you release any energy that you have when you go home from school. For me, that was actually meditation. It helps me a lot with managing stress that I get from assignments, from exams, and also um, allows a little bit of breaks in between studying. So I would just say investing in something that will give you a mental release. Great advice. Um, Cody, how about yourself? How do you stay healthy and well during your studies? Well, who says I am staying healthy? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Um, it wasn't until, well, I started one, meeting people at BCIT and realizing that there are some really great people here. And two, that I started attending BCIT tech talks and planning and recognizing the small achievements in my life 
that I really started to gain traction in my studies and my health started to improve. Um, my release is in the clubs that I participate in. I've worked myself up to be the co-president of the BCIT CSE student chapter, and I love it. It's an avenue for me to take a break from the studies and still participate in the occupation that I love. Great. Thanks, Cody. There's uh, lots of interesting student groups and clubs um, available through our student association. Um, so, so prospective students can definitely check that out. Thanks for mentioning that. This is a question for all of you and our final question for the panel, um, which um, someone mentioned in the Q&A as well. So I'm happy that it's our, our last question too, which is what advice would you give to either yourself as a first year student? So looking back, thinking before you entered BCIT, what advice would you give yourself or to um, new or prospective students to BCIT? Um, so we'll start with Sheila. Um, so I'm really thankful that this year I got the opportunity to become a student life ambassador because my first year I was unfortunately on Zoom, so I didn't get to make um, any connections throughout the year. But once um, I became a student life ambassador, I just felt like it was my year to make impact with anybody that I got to um, come across, I would say. So just the people around me, my, um, the staff. So I just feel like at the end of the day, everybody that you get the opportunity to talk to, you're going to leave some kind of sense of um, maybe happiness. So I just feel like, hey, why not leave that around at BCIT whenever I can? <laughs> so your advice is leave some happiness in any connection yeah, that you make. Okay, good definitely. advice. Um, we'll go to Cody next. BCIT is a challenge, but it really doesn't have to be a struggle. If you are unsure of where to turn first, I suggest that you speak with the Student Life Office. Shala, as she said, she's a Student Life Ambassador with them, and she, I know that she'll be happy to listen and guide you to where you need to go. Um, I also encourage you to make sure that you take the time to explore many of the great offices BCIT and the BCIT SA has to help you with. Um, there's career services, counseling, free peer tutoring, company info sessions, clubs, and a bunch of staff that just want to make sure that you have a good time here. Um, an interesting analogy that I, I was kind of thinking of is that BCIT or any post-secondary is kind of like the movie Cars, you know, like you could always just be on that highway and just go from like year one to year four and just study and get it over with. Or you could take the more windy route, Route 66, and you can really enjoy your time and really get the most out of your studies. And so that's what I think. And hey, maybe you'll meet a talking fire truck. <laughs> Sorry. The analogy got offhand, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cody. We get we get the picture. Thanks for that. And thanks for your wisdom. Yes, me. So I would definitely say um, if you're ever stuck, ask for help. It helped me a lot. Um, whenever I feel like I couldn't do it anymore, I would just ask for help from my instructors. There are amazing people on campus at BCIT and everyone wants you to succeed. So don't be shy to ask for help and also try to socialize with as many people as you can, because at the end of the day, you will know that you will have someone to rely on as support. And that's really important. You can, you're not going to be able to, to do it alone at, at BCIT. And it's something that a lot of people actually mention. Yeah, great life lesson. Ask for help, right? Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Um, just looking at our time here, we'll wrap up. I do see some questions um, in the Q&A and we'll attempt to answer those by, by typing a response um, to you folks. So thank you for posing those. A big thank you to our students for giving of their time this afternoon to share about their experience at BCIT. Um, we appreciate you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also get the honor of speaking to this next slide um, about the Student Life Office. And you heard some of our um, student speakers speak about the Student Life Office and the various services and programs that they offer. Um, so happy to just speak to a few of these. Um, our office oversees orientation and transition. And so if you do choose to join us at BCIT, there'll be initiatives and program during your first days, weeks, and months on campus to help you get oriented to the campus. And we call this time kickstart. 
We have an online student success hub that guides you through some of the basics of what you need to know as you join the BCIT community, um, from things like how to maintain academic integrity to what services and supports are available to you. You heard about our student life ambassadors, a few of them um, spoke already. So this is a group of student employees um, who really promote well-being on campus and also help students navigate campus services and programs. We do some workshops, events, and education that promote health and well-being on campus. And we also have an early assist program. So this is a referral program where anyone from the community can reach out to our early assist team to get some wraparound support. Um, so that may be some advice on how to navigate um, systems and processes at BCIT, or it might be referral to on and off campus resources. Of course, to learn more, you can visit um, bcit.ca student life office um, or feel free to contact us. Um, so I'll hand it back over to Sarah, who's going to be guiding us through the next um, portion of the presentation. Great. Thank you so much, Krista. Um, so we're going to talk about accessibility services to begin with. So if you have any medical diagnosis that creates barriers to accessing education or demonstrating your knowledge and ability, whether you identify as having a disability or not, you may be eligible for an academic accommodation um, to address those barriers. So just like Shala was saying, if you have a concussion, if you um, hurt yourself, um, you can go and register with um, accessibility services and they can make sure that your future with BCIT is um, as stress-free as possible, whether you need someone to write an exam for you because um, your wrist is um, injured or if you need some extra time for a test, um, accessibility services really provides you with all of those um, accommodations that you need to thrive at BCIT. So to receive accommodations, you need to register with accessibility services. And how might you do this? Well, for medical documentation, you're encouraged to use the BCIT medical form. And once you have successfully completed the required documents, you can contact us at 604-451 6963 or email at accessibility at bcit.ca to book an appointment. And we're going to make sure that we put that information in the chat so you don't have to um, stress about writing it down quickly as I tell you. Um, and um, that will make things easier. So yeah, accessibility services will seek to maximize your learning opportunity and take into account your documented challenges while ensuring you feel safe and supported. So we're just gonna leave this slide up for um, another moment, just in case you have any questions related to accessibility services or wanna take a screenshot and then we'll move to the next. Wonderful. So let's move on to student financial aids and awards. BCIT financial aid provides students with information about various financial aid programs assist with the application process and aid in the resolutions of problems, as well as administering scholarships and bursaries. So student financial aid and awards, or SFAA, can help you determine the type of funding to apply for, assist with the application process, help you access the funds, as well as provide information on repayment options for your student loan. So as you can see, they really help you throughout the entire process of applying, for a loan repaying, and they also um, deal with scholarships and bursaries, um, which, is, which is really awesome because um, students at BCIT, uh, they get rewarded for their academic performance if they do meet um, the top marks at BCIT, and there is an award ceremony, and it's, it's really a great event. So BCIT Financial Aid Department um, administers various awards, including scholarships, bursaries, entrance awards, and achievement awards. So lots of different types. You can see the website for application deadline dates and also all the differences between, you know, a scholarship versus a bursary versus an achievement award. Um, SFAA also processes emergency funding, loans and bursaries. Both types of funding require an appointment with a financial aid advisor. They're very friendly. I've met them before and they can definitely help you throughout the process. Students can contact BCIT Student Financial Aid at 604 432-8555, our email at um, finaid at bcit.ca, or visit the website. 
So we'll just keep that on the screen for a moment and we'll also send you the contact information in the chat. Oh, it's already been done, amazing. Okay, so Student Health Services. Student Health Services is your campus clinic located on Burnaby campus, providing confidential medical care for current BCIT students year round. Student Health Services continue to offer virtual care through phone and video appointments to all BCIT, stu BCIT students at all BCIT campuses. So no matter which campus you're attending, if you need to see um, a doctor or a nurse, um, BCIT Health Services can definitely accommodate you. The physician or nurse will do an assessment during your phone or video appointment and schedule an in-person follow-up session if needed. So currently there are no walk-ins allowed. It's all um, done online for now. And uh, you can contact Student Health Services to make an appointment by calling 604-432-8608 or book online. Um, clinic hours and further information are also available on the website. Um, the doctors at the Student Health Services are really awesome. They also understand what it's like to be a BCIT student. So there's a lot of things that you don't even have to explain and they really have your back when it comes to getting um, any type of um, health related help, sexual health, mental health, injuries and wounds, immunizations um, and other procedures as well. Okay, so counseling and student development. Now, I don't think I could talk about it um, any better than Shala. Um, her experience with counseling was truly, truly amazing. And it just shows the amount of support and positive impact that these counselors make um, on the lives of, of BCIT students. So the great thing about BCIT is that all enrolled students can access free confidential counseling while they study at BCIT. Counselors offer one-to-one -one appointments that provide a supportive, non-judgmental um, environment to students to talk about any issues or concerns they may face while attending their programs. Students can get help with academic, personal, mental health, and career-related concerns. We also offer group and groups and workshops such as mindfulness at BCIT. So, you know, it's really great to not just work on um, reactive health, but also preventative health as well. And so these mindfulness workshops um, are really, really great for just building, um, I would say a strong foundation because BCIT is known for its intensive program and it can be stressful at times. So being able to also practice um, healthy mindfulness exercises is really key to um, balancing everything. And so um, you know, there's meditation and breathing workshops at BCIT, which is also done through counseling and student development. Um, and as, as I mentioned, we know that being a student at BCIT is quite stressful. Um, and especially during these past two years, adjusting to the current global situation, it may create more challenges. So check out our mental health at home resources and other services online, our caring and supportive counselors, especially, I think it was Kirk. He, shout out to Kirk. Um, we are here for you. And the counselors are truly, truly amazing. Awesome. And that is the information um, to get in touch with BCIT counseling. Student housing. This one is close to my heart because back in the day when I was a BCIT student, I was also a residence advisor, therefore living on campus um, at campus student housing. So. Um, lots of great memories um, in this place. And if you look really closely at the photo, uh, I'm in it, but don't look too closely because it's not a very great photo of me. Anyways, student housing. You are eligible to apply for accommodation at BCIT Student Housing if you have applied to a full-time cohort-based program at BCIT or even an apprenticeship as long as it's longer than 12 weeks. On-campus accommodation is limited and not guaranteed. So you need to apply to it and you can do that by visiting bcit.ca slash housing. Student housing consists of seven buildings on the Burnaby campus, each containing four suites of 12 bedrooms. 12 students live together in each suite, sharing laundry, bathrooms, and a living room and two full kitchen areas. 
it creates a really nice community because people cook meals together. And oftentimes there are some international students who live there. So there's a lot of, um, you know, meals eaten together and it's a really nice um, community and cultural experience um, from, from what I remember. Applications for fall 2022 long-term housing will be available at bcat.ca slash housing at the end of February. So, you know, this event is very good time because it is a reminder that if you're interested in getting um, your application together, now is the time to do it as um, it ends uh, later this month. There are applications for students um, applying to live in housing starting fall 2022 in programs that are longer than 12 weeks, as I mentioned earlier. So a few really interesting facts as well is, did you know that uh, there's going to be a new student housing building built on campus? The BCIT Student Housing Project will provide affordable, sustainable housing for more than 450 BCIT students. Um, when complete, the 12-story student housing facility will feature more than 450 beds in a studio and single units, so common spaces as well, and support areas, and an outdoor accessible plaza. So it, sound, it sounds very chic. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Um, the use of mass timber construction will ensure that this is a sustainable building, as well as a beautiful centerpiece for the Burnaby campus. Um, so that's something really exciting to look forward to. Um, I believe that there's renderings on CBC. Um, they covered it BCAT's website as well. And also I think Daily Hive did. Um, so you can see how this building is going to look and it's literally right on campus. So um, it's, it's really something very exciting. Okay, so recreation services. So one of the best parts of being a BCIT student and employee is that you get uh, free admission to um, the rec center at BCIT. And it is state of the art. All the treadmills and ellipticals allow you to watch YouTube while you work out, check your email. Um, it's a really great facility and the people are even better. So recreation services is really there for you and for yeah, students, employees at BCIT to take care of the body, to reduce stress. Um, and we offer a variety of classes and activities, including a free lunchtime class every weekday, um, top of the line weight room and access to per personal trainers plus sports programs. Um, the people are awesome. They have towel services, lockers, um, showers, so all the amenities that you would get um, from a gym that you would normally have to pay for, it is included for BCIT students, which is really, really awesome. So we do have one more opportunity for you to, um, you know, take out your phone again and answer one of the questions. So we would like to know, we're going to show that there's a poll on Slido, um, what recreation programs are you most interested in? So without your phone, scan that QR code and start to vote. You have the option of boxing, yoga, spin, bar, gymnasium, intramural sports. Okay, archery is doing pretty well. Weight room, people are pretty excited about that. Oh, weight room has now beat archery. Boxing class as well. Yoga, okay, great. Some yogis in the room. Um, Archery, oh, but the weight room. I think the weight room's the winner. Oh, there's some gymnasium use, bar class, table tennis. Let's see what else. No spin. The spin class at BCIT is really great because Ty plays some of the best music and you might be able to meet Ty later in this presentation. Okay. Okay, so right now I would say the top three are the weight room, yoga. Yoga really, really did well. And I would say archery, archery, yeah. And then boxing was pretty close as well. So um, thank you so much for participating in that poll. Um, those are all programs and courses, sorry, classes that you can take at BCIT. Um, and it's just such a great way to unwind and kind of take a break from all the studying that you have to do as a BCIT student.
Great, so now I am going to introduce um, Susanna Ken, who's going to present about the Center for Workplace Education. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the introduction, Sarah. Uh, so with BCIT's commitment to our students' professional uh, success here, um, within the Center for Workplace Education, we have uh, various uh, supports that um, will um, help students in their journey. So one of the ones that I'd like to uh, speak to um, on the next slide um, is our uh, portal called eJobs. eJobs is our um, platform um, that will uh, post opportunities uh, that are part-time jobs, full-time jobs, uh, seasonal jobs. Um, we have employers that um, come to uh, post specifically to uh, us at BCIT because they know of the variety of programs that we offer at BCIT and are really interested in hiring um, from the student pool as well as alumni pool. So uh, once you get here to BCIT, I encourage you to sign up uh, for the uh, free posting service um, and you will have access to that throughout as a student and also when you graduate and become an alum. On the next slide, um, what I'd like to um, share with you is we also have a program called the BCIT Career Edge Program. This is a free self-paced opportunity to really build your uh, career toolkit. You have an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one career coaching. Um, we have access um, to online workshops and you'll have access to an eight uh, module course content. And all of this is designed to really help you in establishing those foundational employability skills uh, that will help you uh, at BCIT IT and into your journey outside of BCIT once you graduate. Um, so I would really encourage you to um, participate in any of these offerings because it is very self-paced. Um, it, it's really possible to uh, fit uh, opportunities in to the busy schedule that you might have at BCIT. Um, the other thing that I, I really want to highlight is this really gives you an opportunity as students to help build um, your confidence, um, your confidence in job search activities, whether it's um, building your resume, writing a cover letter, or um, just walking through your personal brand, and as well as preparing for interviews. Uh, we find that those are some really key um, activities that um, students find extremely helpful in uh, their career journey. Um, and speaking of career journey, um, on the next slide, what um, we have listed here are the cooperative education programs. So at BCIT, hands-on learning is something that is very um, near and dear to our hearts. And with cooperative education programs, so this is a three-way partnership between BCIT, the student and employer groups to um, really have students um, within these 12 area uh, programs to formally embed um, a work term into their, um, their two-year program. Um, and uh, that's the opportunity for students to really uh, dive into their academic um, studies and actually put them into uh, practice at a workplace. And then when they come back to school, um, it's, it's very, very often that they are also sharing um, new information with their peers as well as their instructors about what they had learned um, in the workplace. So a really, really exceptional um, experience for students to have paid work experience. That's another thing that is very um, specific about cooperative education programs as you, as you get paid, you get to build uh, your professional network while you are out um, in the field. Um, and, and many of the times uh, employers are keeping in touch with students that have had co-op terms with them and um, which lines them up really nicely for uh, full-time employment. So these are uh, the 12 uh, co-op education programs that I would encourage you to find out more about if you are going to be attending um, the individual uh, program area information sessions. Now, in addition to cooperative education programs um, that we house within the Center for Workplace Education, uh, there are also other work integrated learning programs that are listed on this slide here. Um, and I, uh, this, it, it, by no means, I, I can't fit everything onto one slide, but um, if you go to our website, you will uh, find a listing of, um, for example, other work integrated learning um, experiences that could include a consulting project, that could include an internship or a practicum, within the various um, schools. And this is really key um, in terms of getting some hands-on experience that BCIT, again, we are very well known for um, because this really contributes to um, the opportunity for students 
to build teamwork, um, to build, um, you know, be uh, well-roundedness and to really have that experience um, connecting in with industry, um, regardless of whether that is a co-op experience or a project experience or an internship or um, any any other uh, form of work integrated learning is, is very, very um, uh, beneficial. And so um, many students um, that uh, take the courses and take these programs at BCIT end up being very, very ready, uh, very ready uh, to join the workforce once they graduate. So please, I encourage you, uh, once you head into the uh, specific program um, information sessions, please do ask um, the respected um, uh, program areas about what the work integrated learning opportunities are within those areas. And that is it for me. Sarah, back to Great. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Susanna. Um, one of the reasons that I decided to study at BCAT was because BCAT has such a great reputation for getting a job after graduation. And um, I mean, it's, it's programs like these that uh, really bring students to the next level in terms of uh, getting hired and starting a meaningful career. So thank you. Um, let's move on to the library. So I would like to introduce Douglas Buchanan from the Learning Commons, and he is going to present about the library at BCIT. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Doug, and yes, I'm going to talk to you briefly about the library and some of the services we have at the Learning Commons. Um, the main library is at the Burnaby campus, and in some ways, it's the heart of the campus where students go to work and study, meet their friends, relax, eat their lunch, things like that. Um, we do also have libraries at other campuses as well, but the Burnaby Library is the main camp, is the main library. Um, you see on your screen, there's a whole bunch of services that we offer. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but um, we do have a lot of e-resources. Um, of course, we have like traditional print paper books as well. We have a stacks on the second floor, but a lot of study is now using electronic resources. And we've got a great staff of librarians that are very approachable, very friendly, and they're able to help you with uh, any questions you have about research and about how to navigate the resources. So they can support you in any assignments and work that you're doing. Um, at the bottom of the first row, you'll see that uh, it says ID cards. Um, you'll get to know the library because uh, this is where you go and get your photograph taken and have your student card issued. Um, so there are a number of different services that the library offers. And um, if anybody has any specific questions about any of these services, feel free to put it in the chat and I can try and answer them for you. All right. But what I'm going to talk about next is a part of the library called the Learning Commons. That's the next slide, please. Thank you. And the Learning Commons is a great service. This is um, an academic support area for BCIT students and all of the Learning Commons services are free. I'm gonna start with the second one on the list called peer tutoring. Now, peer tutors are your fellow students at BCIT who have um, normally they finish their first two terms, their first year. So um, they've taken the courses that you're studying in your first year and they've done well, and they're there to help support you with suggestions and advice that got them through their courses successfully. Um, they're also there to help you work through any problems or questions you might have, um, give you advice on assignments about how to approach tests and that. So, Peer tutors are a great resource. They're quite different. It's, it's a different level of support than you get from instructors because peer tutors are students who have taken the same courses you're taking and they can give you advice and help to get through them. Um, the next one on the list is writing tutoring. Um, depending what course you're going into, you might be doing a fair bit of writing or written assignments. And we've got a writing center and writing tutors who are there to help you with advice on uh, it can be anything from language use to grammar um, to the way that you're structuring a logical argument, supporting your ideas um, about referencing and citations. Uh, you know, when you're at BCIT and writing papers, you might be using um, APA citation styles or things like that. So our tutors are a good resource to help you with questions like that. And 
Uh, you don't even need to have a written paper to come in and talk to the tutors. If you're struggling with what to do, or if you want to brainstorm ideas about how to approach an assignment, the tutors are there to help you with ideas about how to structure a paper, how to approach answering a question. So you could come in and talk to them even before you've started writing. It's a really good service. Related to writing tutoring, the next one on the list is called Right Away. Um, this is also writing tutoring, but it's an asynchronous uh, service, which means uh, you don't actually connect live with the tutor for Right Away. With regular writing tutoring, you're actually connecting with a person and speaking to them. But with Right Away, you submit a piece of work uh, online and then uh, a, few days later, you'll, a few days later, you'll get an email back with comments from the tutor. So right away is a good choice if you're not in a rush, you don't feel like you need to connect with a person. At any rate, the two services are quite different and they're both available for you to choose which one works the best for you. Um, the next one is learning skills seminars. These are faculty led workshops and they are on um, study skills, topics, for, th for example, things like time management. Um, one of the speakers before was saying that, you know, it's a very heavy workload at BCIT. So we speak to a lot of students about how to manage time, how to schedule their time. Other topics that students come to see us about are things like how to prepare for exams and topics like that. So really anything you, you need advice or want to talk to a faculty member about that's non-subject related, you can uh, drop into one of our study skills seminars. Uh, you can book these in advance with a faculty member, or we also have drop-in sessions that are casual where you just come in and talk to us. So there's really good support available there. And the last comment there is about student employment. Um, we're always on the lookout for tutors. So if you decide to study at BCIT and it's something you think you would like to do, um, we start hiring in the spring for tutors to start the following September. And as I say, we're always on the lookout for tutors. So something you could consider doing, working as a peer tutor, looks really good on a resume, gives you an opportunity to build relationships and a sense of community with other students in your program and at BCIT. Uh, so something to consider. All of our services are free and uh, they're really great services to support you in your studies. So I, I, all, I recommend students to take advantage of them. And there's lots of information on all of our services on our website. I see somebody has um, put our link in the chat. So look there and have any information and I will Hang around for about 10 minutes in case anybody has any questions on the Learning Commons or the library. So thank you very much and good luck. Great. Thank you so much, Douglas. That was really, really helpful. Um, okay, great. So, you know, it's, it's been a presentation. We still have some more to go and you might be a little bit tired of, of sitting on your, I mean, sitting in front of your computer screen. So let's take a moment to introduce um, the fitness and wellness coordinator, Ty Embry, to lead us through a healthy recreation stretch break. Thanks, Sarah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Tyler Embry. I'm the fitness and wellness coordinator uh, for recreation services. I'm coming to you from the fitness center, and I'm just going to take you through a quick five minute stretch break. Um, so like Sarah said, you've probably been sitting in a computer for a little bit. So if you also want to use this time to, you know, go make yourself a tea or do your own stretches, you know, or anything you need to do to recharge, uh, we can do that. A couple of things, if you can do this seated or standing, uh, you are going to need maybe like a sweater or a towel or a piece of clothing. Uh, that's the only thing you're going to need. Uh, and we'll do a, a couple of stretches that go from uh, head to toe. So if you're sitting and standing, just want to stand up as tall as you can, sit up as tall as you can, just going to do a couple of big neck circles like so. And you want to make those a little bit slower, a little bit bigger. 
in there. And you're gonna hold your head off to one side, reach over and just gently help that stretch. So you can pull. And gently release, let's make our way to the other side. Just gonna gently kind of put your ear on your shoulder, sit up as tall as you can, pull the head over. Good, remember to breathe in, nice big breath in, breathe out. Good, and then another one, you're gonna interlock your fingers, put that behind the crown of your head, bring your elbows as close as you can, and then you're just gonna pull your head down. Okay, now the further you go forward, right, you can kind of move that stretch just a little bit. Good, and again, big neck circles. Good, and let's do some big shoulder rolls. Good, and let's go the other way, forwards. Good, now next thing I want you to do is you're gonna to touch your fingers together. You're not gonna to try to crack them, but you're just gonna gently press each finger, kind of create a little bit of space throughout all those knuckles. Good, give them a little bit of shake, wiggle the fingers, right? And then we're gonna clasp the fingers, elbows together, and just do a little bit of a rotation. Good, and let's go the opposite way. Keep those fingers interlocked. You're gonna press out, don't crack, all right? Just press out. Well, can you turn off the lights? Good, and then we'll bring it up. And we can just do a little bit of a side to side, right? Or you can even reach and climb, reach and climb, reach and climb. Good. And we'll bring those uh, elbows, wrists, and shoulders in line with each other. Just hold it like this. We're just doing some light twists. This is nice to do if you're seated in a chair, right? Or you can do it standing. You can also do a double pulse on each side, like so. Good, give it a little bit of a shake. Now this is where you're gonna need that towel or sweater or piece of clothing or anything really. Uh, what are you gonna do? Just gonna kind of grab your sweater or towel and then just flip through. So I'm trying to flip through. Like so. And if you can go all the way down, great. That's good. Yeah. And if you're having trouble flipping through, you got to grab it a little bit wider. All right. So I'm just trying to flip through all the way like this. Right. Really good way to open up the chest and shoulders. Again, a couple of big neck circles. Good, now moving on to the lower body. Uh, if you're seated in a chair, you're just gonna take one leg, cross above your knee, above your ankle, and then just sit, right, and reach forward. You can do this standing as well. Good. Nice, let's pull a knee up into your chest, so as tall as you can, Hold this up. Get that, give that ankle a little bit of a shake. Other side, up, cross above the knee, above the ankle. You can do a little bit of a seat. Remember, if you're in a chair, just lean forward if you want to try standing. Now, I know some of you said you're interested in yoga. Uh, I do teach yoga here as well, and this position is known as lotus. Good, pull that knee up. Good, give that ankle a little bit of a shake. Do a little bit of a jump. Shake things out, a little bit of a twist. And uh, thanks for having me, Sarah. That was great. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your session. It's so informative and I can't wait to see you all at the rec services. But yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Ty. I feel so much better after doing some of those moves and. Uh, I can't wait to join that yoga class. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'll see you, Sarah. Take care, Ty. Okay, awesome. So uh, hopefully everyone feels a little bit more refreshed. Um, and I would like to introduce the next presenter. 
um, which is Kim Dotto, Dean of Applied Research. Um, and Kim, please present about um, applied research at BCIT. Great, uh, thanks. I hope everybody's had a great uh, student success session so far. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about applied research. It's a little different than some of the other topics, but one of the important things, and I'll mention it a few times, is uh, this is a way to make some money. Um, at BCIT, we hold uh, what we call the BCIT Student Innovation Challenge, and basically we're looking for bright ideas from students. Um, they can be in any program. Uh, they can be part of your program. They could be an idea or something that you've been working on your own. Um, but we like to uh, see some of the innovations that come up through students. And if you go to our website, you can see some of the past winners and they have been very innovative uh, projects that uh, some of which have gone on to be uh, commercial success. We have three categories in the Student Innovation Challenge. One is for applied research. One is for uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. And the other one is for sustainability. Uh, as I mentioned, um, it can be a class project or a personal project. It doesn't have to be something related to your class, but often uh, ideas come up in your capstone projects uh, in uh, second term or in second or third or fourth year, uh, and they can be turned into an uh, innovation challenge uh, application. Uh, as I mentioned before, money. Uh, first prize in each of the categories is $5,000. There are also second and third prizes, not quite as much, but uh, substantial prizes as well. Um, you can get help from faculty and research support uh, from within um, your schools and also from uh, the Applied Research Office over in the Center for Applied Research and Innovation. And we also hold uh, entrepreneur workshops, normally in non-COVID times, but there still is uh, availability of help uh, in those areas uh, when you're um, working on your projects. Uh, typically, the applications uh, need to be in by Wednesday, April 20th. Uh, for those of you who aren't students yet, uh, you would be looking at this next year, uh, but there are possibly some students who are online uh, right now uh, as BCIT students, so if you're interested, uh, please keep this in mind. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there are all sorts of other applied research opportunities for students at BCIT. Some of them are part of your program, and they're often referred to as capstone projects or directed studies or work integrated learning or industry sponsored student projects. Um, we work with uh, all of the schools and all of the programs around these projects. So if you have something that you need done, 3D printing, help with electronics, uh, you want to talk to somebody about some ideas off, we're happy to help you uh, with your projects. We won't do them for you but uh, we're more than happy to uh, give you some direction and speak to students about uh, what's possible. Um, we also hire summer work uh, students as uh, research assistants. We have uh, internal institute research funds. Uh, one that would be accessible to students is what we call a phase zero research project for a student researcher. If you find a faculty member who uh, you uh, meet and you know, want to do some research with, we have money to uh, fund uh, some initial uh, literature and background research in that area. Um, and we also work with um, the uh, BCIT Student Association uh, through our Applied Research Liaison Office to uh, help with entrepreneurial projects that might not fit under applied research, but we have lots of experience in patents, in licensing, in other innovation um, areas, and we have contacts in industry that um, are uh, accessible through us to students uh, if it uh, looks like that they can be of help. So you can find out more by uh, visiting the Applied Research website that you can see below. And uh, honestly, if you have any questions, you can email me directly as well. I'm uh, always happy to um, respond uh, or you can just send an email to research at bcit.ca. Thanks all and have a great info session. Thank you so much, Kim. That was really informative and it's great to see all the innovative um, projects that uh, your department is working on. So just a few things to cover before we get into some questions and answers. So just wanna remind you that by registering and attending Big Info Night, you have a chance to win one of three $1,000 tuition prizes from BCAT. So make sure that you complete your entry by submitting the Big Info survey and check your inbox on February 18th um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to uh, reach out to events at bcit.ca or see the full contest rules at bcit.ca um, slash contest. 
uh, slot, uh, dash promotions. But thank you for having it in the chat. That's really helpful. Yeah, so don't forget to do that because $1,000 towards your tuition is a really great help. Awesome. Um, so just a few last things also. Um, a few ways that you can learn more about BCIT is attending info sessions like this one. So if you're here, you're doing a wonderful job by um, hearing about all the great supports that BCIT students get to experience. Um, be sure to check out the 360 uh, virtual campaign highlights, sorry, virtual campus highlights. So we have five amazing campuses, um, all that are BCIT campuses. My favorite other than the Burnaby is the aerospace campus because there are live hangars and people working on helicopters and planes and it just feels uh, so amazing. And it's right by YVR airport. So you really feel like you are um, learning the skills that will take you to the next level and allow you to actually uh, work in the field. So really cool to see the different campus highlights um, with the virtual 360 degree views, um, connecting with a program advisor. So there are over 300 programs available to students at BCIT. And so sometimes you might want some direction. So program advising is there to help you as well. There's a few uh, attending this info session so um, they can help out with some of the questions you may have, but feel free to also further book an appointment. Um, and then you can also learn more about admissions and upgrading. And then if you want, you can order a free copy of the 2022-2023 BCAT View Book. And you can get more details on all of this at bcat.ca slash experience. So with that, um, we would like to get into some questions and answers. So it looks like a lot of the questions have already been answered, which is really, really great to hear. Um, were there any questions that were really relevant and might be interesting to bring up to the audience? Okay, I can say one. Um, I saw one that says, if I already have a bachelor's degree, how will the entry requirements differ for me? So I can answer that one because, well, actually Maggie answered this one and her response was really great. So actually a lot of students who go to BCIT already have a bachelor's degree. So you are not alone. Um, I think even it's a larger percentage of students at BCIT already have a bachelor's. And so the entrance requirements will vary depending on the BCIT program that you've applied to. Um, I believe that programs will take high school transcripts or also university transcripts as long as they meet the requirements. And um, yeah, I think that that's really relevant because a lot of people will get a degree from a university and then they go to BCIT to get those more hands-on skills. That definitely was my experience. I first studied at UBC and got a bachelor's degree. It was really great, but I wanted to get more hands-on skills. So I decided to study the marketing communications program at BCIT. So I was, you know, one of those students with a bachelor's applying to BCIT and it worked out really well for me. So yeah, that's a really great question. Are there any other questions? Oh, there's some more questions here. Okay, great. So maybe I'll, I'll ask one of the questions. Um, let's see here. If my program requires post-secondary courses, can I apply if I plan to complete the courses in the summer? I could answer this question if you'd like, Sarah. Love, I would love that. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, it would depend, but I would say that most of our programs that do require post-secondary education and courses, they actually don't allow um, like midterm grades or any partial, partially finished courses. You do have to usually have those courses successfully completed in full prior to the program's application deadline date. So again, it would depend on the program, but I'm assuming you, you mentioned um, a, po a program that requires post-secondary, as I mentioned, likely those are 
mostly our health sciences that do. And yeah, they have a quite specific application deadline dates and they typically don't um, allow midterm grades. So feel free to reach out to us at program underscore advising at bcit.ca if you do want to follow up and you can just let us know what program um, it was specifically that you're interested in and we can guide you a little bit further. But generally I would say if a program requires post-secondary specific courses, um, you do have to have them completed prior to the application deadline date. So hopefully that answers your question. Great, thank you, Maggie. Um, this question from AJ, I have a son in grade 10. Do you offer any summer courses to help him prepare for when he goes to post-secondary or when they go to post-secondary? So Maggie, just because you're in program advising, do you know if, if there is a chance that we offer um, summer courses? Hi there. Yeah, I was just going to pop on. Sorry, I was just uh, mulling no, no the worries. question over a little bit. I apologize for the delay. Um, not, I mean, really, I think as long as you're, I believe the minimum age is 16 for um, a student to attend part-time studies or any schooling rather at BCIT. Um, so part-time studies, there's no really specific that I'm aware of, um, like prep courses necessarily. We do have a lot of upgrading courses that you could potentially um, look into for a program, but obviously if they're in grade 10, they haven't even taken the high school courses yet. So that doesn't really necessarily make sense. Um, sometimes through the individual schools, like um, the School of Computing, uh, School of Health, et cetera, they may have like prep type things, but that's, um, I think something with COVID that's kind of been put on hold for a couple of years, but uh, hopefully we'll be back, but it's nothing unfortunate. I do apologize. It's nothing I'm aware of as of right now, specifically as far as prep courses, but perhaps I could look into that. You might, again, sorry to keep directing you to this email address, but uh, feel free to reach out to us, program underscore advising at bcit.ca. And what we can do is research that a little bit more for you and hopefully get you an answer. But as of right now, it's um, not something that I'm aware of. Sorry about that. That's all right. Thank you so much. Krista, did you want to add something? I was just going to add that for our admitted students, um, we do have the Student Success Hub, which comes in the form of an online course. Um, so it's not for grade 10 students, but for students before they're entering their studies at BCIT, and it's an online course that really helps them understand um, their rights and responsibilities as BCIT students and help them navigate the transition to post-secondary study. Um, so that is an online offering for our incoming students. Thanks, Sarah. Awesome, thanks for adding that, Krista, that was great. Um, I wonder if there's any other questions that have already been answered that might be um, just some something to kind of bring up. Um, I, see, I see one, it says, can ID cards be done online um, or ordered online? I think that's a good question because on the first day um, of orientation, there's a lot of students wanting to get that ID card and being able to order it online would be um, a great option. I don't know if Douglas is still on, so I know that he would be able to answer that, but it looks like maybe he is no longer in the combo. Um, does anyone know the answer to this? Let's see, actually, there should be, ah, it looks like you can order the card online um, at www.bcit.ca slash card slash get one online. Um, I will put that in the chat. And it looks like Maggie answered. So thank you so much, Maggie, for, for helping with that. Okay, I see one over here. Can you give more information about how we apply and complete post-secondary classes before we apply to the program? Oh, sorry about that, sir. I, I just responded, <laughs> as you were saying, and I just hit respond in the, in the text. Um, I think that was just sort of um, piggybacking off of that uh, previous question that I just responded to live, saying that, um, again, with programs that have post-secondary requirements. Generally, those do have to be completed fully prior to the program's application deadline date. But again, if you if you don't mind um, just 
emailing us at the contact, the program underscore advising at bcit.ca. We're more than happy to answer that a little bit more specifically. And if you need upgrading options or where to take these courses, we can definitely assist you with that. Because again, it really is program specific. So it's not just like a one general answer that I can give for all programs. It really depends on the program that you're applying for. Hopefully that answers your question. Awesome, thank you. I saw a question that says that, are the info sessions record, recorded for viewing later? And the answer is yes, they are recorded. So you will be able to view this later. So uh, yeah, great question. Um, another one that I saw was um, about a specific program. So Sylvie, she believes she um, is interested in deter interior design, which is a program that we do offer at BCIT. And Sylvie wants to know when would be the best time to learn more uh, through big info. So I think Leon, maybe you can answer this. Do you know when um, this, the school of, um, of I, think, I believe it's construction. Do you know when they're going to have their info session? Uh, yes, school of construction is having their info session tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. Great, so tomorrow at 6 p.m. Sylvie is your answer and you can find out more information um, on the website for all the big info events and you will have access because you uh, registered for this info session. So um, that's where you can learn more about interior design. Um, will you be sharing the PowerPoints and all the email contacts? I believe that we like to keep um, the emails uh, confidential because some people may want some uh, privacy but we will, as I mentioned, be recording this info session. So you will be able to see all the slides as many times as you want. Um, I believe that is the case, correct, Leon? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, awesome. Okay, great, that was answered. Um, I, I think those are all the questions we have left. Um, are there any last questions or any last notes that anyone wants to um, contribute? Okay, I think we're going to leave it there um, as we are uh, running out of time. Um, and I believe that we gave you a lot of information. So we don't want to, you know, inundate you with anything more. Um, and as you know, we have provided all the links for more information. So with that, I would like to wrap everything up and say thank you so much for joining Big Info um, for learning more about student success. And we hope to see you in September. Hello, everyone. I'm just setting up our, there we go. I'm hoping everyone can see my screen now. It says BCIT Health Sciences. It is now 5.30, so it is time for our health sciences portion of uh, the big info event tonight. Um, hello and welcome. My name is Erin Ruggieri, and I will be moderating the health sciences section for the next 45 minutes or so. So we have representatives from each of our programs ready to respond to your questions in the Q&A window. So please feel free to type uh, any questions or uh, queries you have in as we go along and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of them uh, with our presentation this, night, this evening as well. If we have time at the end of our presentation, I may be able to read some of those questions aloud as well. So please remember that if your questions are very specific to your specific transcripts or your specific situation, uh, your best bet is always to email program advising at BCIT and you can find their contact information on our website. Uh, now I would like to go ahead and introduce the Dean of the School of Health Sciences, Lisa Chu. Lisa? Lisa, you're on mute. Okay, I'll try again. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. <laughs> good evening, everyone. And it's so good to see so many of you today joining us um, on learning a bit more about health sciences, the School of Health Sciences. So what is health sciences? It covers a whole range of areas, whether it be health care related or indirect health care related. It could include patient care, like for example, nurses in hospitals or community care, laboratory testing and investigation, like our med lab technologists, um, community health and safety, for example, our public health inspectors, um, our occupational health and safety experts, also includes the area of prevention and also treatment, as well as diagnostics, like our sonographers. So a, a huge range of health related um, areas. And we have here at BCIT 32 health sciences programs. So lots to choose from, lots of different opportunities. Next slide, please, Erin. 
The many of our programs are the one of, a, one of its kind in Western Canada. So for example, in specialty nursing, some of our programs, whether it be uh, critical care or pediatric emergency, are one of its only kind in Western Canada. Other programs like clinical genetics um, only, um, were the only one in Western Canada, as well as prosthetics and orthotics. So some of our programs are very specialized, only offered here at BCIT for all of Western Canada. Uh, in terms of education delivery, we have different um, methods of teaching, uh, a hybrid blended learning, whether it's online for some courses, um, and also some courses have labs, which is really face-to-face -face on campus, but also for many of our programs and courses, there are clinical placements or where students actually go into clinical settings as part of your learning. And, and with a combination of online labs, as well as clinical placements, you get all the skills you need to start your career as a health healthcare profession. So, and on, on top of that, our faculty are very much um, um, aligned with industry needs. Um, many of our faculty have, have actually come from industry, so very much um, up, to, up to speed on the skills and level understanding of industry needs and so forth, but very much um, a very superb um, faculty here in the School of Health Sciences. So is health sciences for you? Um, so are you interested in caring for people? Because that's very key. Um, anything in, to do with health sciences, health related care, to do with people. Are you a people person? Do you have good interpersonal skills? Um, are you interested in ensuring safety and health standards for a community? Are you able to work independently, but also as well as part of a team? Teamwork is very much a, a, a huge portion of any industry these days, and also for healthcare, very much team-related work. Do you have good communication skills? And for those of you looking at working with people, you have to have good communication skills, good interpersonal skills. Aptitude for science and math is also very important, but also keen observational skills is key. So what jobs are available in health sciences? Right now, and as, as you all have seen in, in the TV, in the news, the media, there's a huge need for healthcare professions in all parts of the, the sector, whether it be in um, the hospital sector, um, community sector, like nurses, um, whether it be in laboratories, um, lab technologists, but also other health areas like uh, occupational health and safety, food technology, right now, food security, um, the need for a good health processing, manufacturing plants is very, very important. So health sciences jobs are really going at a significant pace um, throughout the whole province and across the country. And also with an aging population, demand for a healthcare professional can, can to grow um, um, in the future. Um, and again, you know, there's going to be a need for all areas of healthcare uh, down the road. And again, 98% of our, our graduates from BC are, are employed in their field almost immediately. In fact, uh, for many of our students, they actually um, do receive job offers before they even finish the courses, before they even graduate. So huge opportunities in the healthcare sector and in health sciences. And back to you, Erin. Thank you, Lisa, for that great introduction to health sciences as a whole. Uh, before we continue on and hear about some of the specific programs we have at BCIT, I just wanted to let everyone know that in about two weeks time, we are having our health sciences info session week. So between February 28th and March 4th, we have, I think, 20 different program specific info sessions. So each, each day's info sessions are free, they're online and they run less than an hour. And there you will hear uh, how to get into the program, what the career is like, what the program is like itself. We'll have students speaking about uh, their experience in the program. So if you hear about anything this evening as we go along and you're like, oh, I wish I could hear more of that. We went over that too quickly. This is what you wanna sign up for. And you can sign up for one, you can sign up for whole bunch, um, but the link is there on your screen. So please do join us in about two weeks time if you wanna hear any more specific information about any of the programs we touched on tonight. And with that, I am going to pass it forward to, uh, oops, I skipped a slide, sorry, Shelley, to Shelley Fraser, our Associate Dean of the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. 
Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Lisa. Good evening, everybody. I'm so happy that we could have 109 of you join us. I am calling in um, from the lands of the Coast Salish people where I live on a beautiful Vancouver evening. So happy to be here. As Aaron said, I'm the Associate Dean of the Nursing Program, and I'm going to spend just a few minutes outlining um, our Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And then I will turn it over to my colleague, Kathy, who will continue and talk about specialty nursing. So next slide, please. I wanted to highlight some quick facts, but I wanna add a fact that's very exciting for the whole School of Health Science. And that's the move to a brand new building this summer. And um, if you've traveled down Willington or Canada Way, you'll see it right on the corner. It's a state of art facility where all of our health science students will come together and share in learning experiences. And it is absolutely amazing. So really looking forward to that. And I did see it made our quick list. So I'm just highlighting that for you. So what is our BSN program? It's a three year program and there are three terms per year. And the interesting thing is we have three intakes, um, maybe something you're not really familiar with. We do an intake in September, in January and in April. The good news is you do get summers off and a good portion of December. So some students do seek employment and there are periods of downtime during um, the, your education. We're a mix of classroom, lab and clinical in every term. And I think one thing that sets us apart is that you actually start your first clinical placement within six weeks of starting the program. So we're very much industry based and hands on, which makes us quite unique. We also utilize classroom lab and simulation in the program. And the new health science building has a lot of simulation and different equipment built in for all of our students. Um, in your clinical experience, you'll see that we have various partners in industry. Most of the lower mainland healthcare um, hospitals and community-based settings. And our students travel to very many different areas across the city. In our program, we have a focus of leadership. So there's opportunities for you as a student to take on student representative positions and different positions to gain your leadership muscle because we really look to graduate students who will take leadership roles in industry. And our NCLEX exam rate, pass rate, sits around 98%. So that's the licensure exam that you need to write to actually become employed as a registered nurse. So that's good news as well. Next slide, please. So what does a BCIT nursing grad look like? These are some of the attributes that you'll notice we talk a lot throughout the program about. You are joining a profession, a regulated profession as a registered nurse. And so um, there's a socialization that goes with that. We see uh, nurses as leaders in global healthcare. And so we provide opportunities for you to um, learn. You're an advocate for patient and for causes and that's promoted throughout the program. You're also a collaborator. Once graduated, you're working in an interprofessional team with doctors and other healthcare providers. So we really emphasize that in our program. We also emphasize lifelong learning and communication skills. Next slide, please. And what makes a successful student? Well, I think a determination and a drive is really important and a desire to join the profession certainly is, is important, but also ability to manage stress and anxiety effectively, communication skills, leadership skills, experience working on a team. That could be a sports team or a band, um, those types of uh, experiences. Again, as Lisa mentioned, an aptitude for math and science and related volunteer or work experience is always, always preferred. However, we understand during the pandemic, some of these opportunities have been limited and we completely understand that. Next slide, please. So entrance requirements, and probably the last thing you wanna hear is to go to a, a, a web page, but really this is an amazing resource. And um, students have said it's quite well laid out and easy to understand. And it gives you all the requirements that you need to apply to the program. Um, it is a competitive entry, but we do take 64 students in each of the three terms. Um, and you apply for the term that you're wishing or desire to start in. Uh, preference is always given to applicants that um, are proven to be, have the aptitude to be most successful. So although we have minimum requirements, um, most of our applicants exceed those requirements and some of those are listed. 
on the slide before you. So it's a fantastic program, YBCIT. I came here as the Associate Dean a couple of years ago and I joined an amazing faculty of 120 um, and working with over 550 students across the program. Um, so it's an exciting time for nursing and I encourage anyone, if this has piqued your interest or you wanna know more information to attend the information session on March 1st, where we'll do a deeper dive and certainly mem many members of my team are on the line now ready to take any questions you have in chat. So good luck with your decision and wishing you all the best in a health science career potentially. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Trina, Kathy Kennedy now, who is the specialty nursing associate dean. Hi, Kathy. All right, thank you so much, Shelley. Um, what an excellent overview of the BSN program, which leads in nicely to um, me discussing specialty nursing. So I'm the Associate Dean for the specialty nursing programs here at BCIT. And as Lisa very accurately highlighted, um, our programs are in high demand and very unique across the country and in particular in Western Canada. And so certainly we're needing a lot of um, specialty educated nurses uh, after the pandemic and in general moving forward. And so we work very collaboratively with our health authority partners and hospitals, not just in British Columbia, but um, across the entire country. And so our programs are designed as a post BSN education. So if if you've come in with your BSN or uh, diploma as a registered nurse, this is the best place uh, for you to continue your education in, in um, West Specialty area. So it's not uncommon when um, nurses are going through nursing school that they identify with uh, a specialty area that they're feeling particularly passionate about. And so right now we are finding that a, a lot of employers are uh, really interested in nurses right out of nursing school and moving them towards a specialty education. So we are available to help support during that. And so I did want to highlight our 10 programs that we have. Pediatrics, of course, dealing with um, children. And then we have a, a very specialized pediatric emergency nursing program. And so that would be pediatric trauma and working with children in an emergency department. We have our pediatric critical care program. We're working in a pediatric ICU. We have a perinatal program, which is maternity and labor delivery. We also have a perioperative program. So for surgical or nurses, uh, very very robust neonatal program working in a neonatal ICU, a critical care program working in an adult uh, ICU program. Um, we have our emergency program. We have a high acuity program, which is uh, specifically like a cardiac step down unit. So just that level below um, an ICU. And then we have our nephrology program, which is also very popular. So that would be dialysis patients, kidney, uh, patients with kidney disease. And so uh, all very popular and in high demand. And all of our faculty uh, are clinically current, come from those areas and work collaboratively with the educators on the units to ensure that we're delivering the kind of education that we need to make you job ready as you move into that area. I did want to highlight that both the nephrology program and the perioperative program have a pathway for licensed practical nurses, LPNs. So if you are out there listening and you're an LPN and interested in these specialty areas, perioperative and nephrology have um, pathways for you to do that. And as Erin outlined, we do have an info session coming up. So for specialty nursing, it's specifically for us is on March 3rd, where we're able to answer more questions, drill down into some details that you might have, and, and really happy to kind of help connect you with an area that you might have a passion with and ensure that you get the answers that you need. And I did want to highlight that our programs are delivered both by distance and face-to-face. Uh, -face. And so if you live elsewhere or out of the lower mainland, we absolutely deliver these programs by distance and then you, we would set you up in a clinical placement in your area. So with all that being said, I think I will pass it to Trina. So Trina Cardiff is our Associate Dean for Diagnostics and Advanced Practice. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm going to talk about this portfolio. Um, so when I talk about diagnostics, uh, we can go to the next slide, Erin. Um, <clears throat> 
there's nine different programs in the diagnostic and advanced, portfolio, advanced practice portfolio. And so diagnostics are medical modalities that use imaging or vital sign monitoring to help diagnose or treat patients. These professions usually work in hospitals or clinics. And of the nine programs that, of the diagnostic programs and advanced practice programs at DCIT, there's diagnostic medical sonography, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy, medical radiography, cardiac sciences and perfusion, magnetic resonance imaging, electroneurophysiology, and health leadership. So what do you need to get into diagnostics? So we've already talked about a lot of the personal attributes and traits that you should have to come into health. In addition to those, you also need high, uh, strong high school sciences. So uh, math, chemistry, physics, many applicants have previous post-secondary experience. We need relevant work and volunteer experience knowledge of the profession. So Google search, come with your questions um, and proficiency in English. Each program is slightly different with their entrance requirements. So I would encourage you to check out each program's webpage because it's very specific. Program lengths vary with the minimum being about two years. We have day school programs as well as part-time studies programs. And Part-time studies allow you to work while you're doing uh, schooling, and you will come out with either graduate with a diploma, an advanced certificate, or a, a bachelor of science. So there's quite an array of how our programs run. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna talk quickly about the nine programs just to kind of give you a quick overview of what they are. So diagnostic medical sonography or ultrasound. Those grads operate ultrasound equipment to produce and record images of various parts of the body to aid physicians in monitoring pregnancy, diagnosis, diagnosing cardiac, ophthalmic, vascular, and other medical disorders. And um, so they work in hospitals and clinics as well too. So we'll go to the next slide. So nuclear medicine grads, they're technologists. These technologists use special equipment that maps the distribution of radioactive tracers and tagged compounds to help in diagnosing and treating diseases. Radiation therapy. So these grads work and are a key team member in the treatment of cancer patients. The therapists are responsible for planning and delivering therapeutic doses of ionizing radiation as prescribed by a radiation oncologist or a cancer doctor. <laughs> it's got a bit of a leg. <laughs> Medical radiography or x-ray grads, they specialize in x-ray and computed tomography, and they do radiological technologists perform x-rays and other diagnostic imaging examination on patients. And anybody who's had an x-ray is familiar with what the kind of things they do, one piece of what an x-ray technologist does. Cardiac sciences, our cardiac science program has a few options, but the first one is a cardiac diploma. And this trains students to perform non-invasive car diagnostic cardiology procedures, including electrocardiograms, ambulatory monitoring, and exercise stress testing, as well as preparing them to understand the advanced concepts of cardiac devices and electrophysiology. And once you've worked at and have your cardiac uh, a cardiac diploma for a bit, along with clinical experience, you can come back to BCIT and get an advanced certificate in electrophysiology technology, a cardiovascular technology, or a cardiac rhythm device technologist to specialize your care a little bit. Cardiac perfusion grads, they're a key member of a highly specialized surgical team. Cardiac perfusionists work in operating rooms, providing life-saving support to patients undergoing heart surgery. Electroneurophysiology grads, they work as technologists that use sensitive electronic equipment to record and measure the electroactivity of patients' central and peripheral nervous systems. This information can help diagnose, a doctors diagnose diseases, injuries, and abnormalities. MRI, so once you graduate from the MRI program, you can specialize in the operation of a magnetic resonance imaging scanners to obtain scans for analysis. In addition to operating the equipment, the, pa uh, the technologists prepare patients for MRI scans and help physicians diagnose the results. 
And finally, the health leadership program. Once you're working in your chosen healthcare field and want to work towards becoming a leader in your profession, consider BCIT's health leadership program. These courses are taught through the health leadership lens, giving you the leadership perspective and capabilities to advance your career and make a difference as an emerging health leader. So those are a quick overview of the nine diagnostic portfolio. And I'm sorry, they were very quick. Um, I would encourage you to check out the program website and there's nine different uh, info sessions as well. So take a look at the bottom of each slide when you get them uh, emailed to you that, and attend the info session or drop any questions in the chat because the program heads and faculty who are experts in their field are ready and waiting to answer your questions. And I am now going to pass it over to Jennifer Elliott, who's the Associate Dean of Lab and Health. Thank you very much, Trina. Nice to meet you, everyone. Um, as I'm Jennifer Elliott. My portfolio is the Lab and Allied Health Programs, and I have eight programs that are in my portfolio. I'm going to highlight a few of them today. Um, the one that I won't be speaking about is biotechnology, just other than to say that this is a combined program with UBC and BCIT. So the application process for this one is through UBC when you're a first year science student. So this slide here. Um, so lab and allied health includes disciplines that conduct lab-based research into patient samples and disciplines that work for the betterment of public health and other disciplines. It includes medical laboratory science, clinical genetics, food technology, environmental health, occupational health and safety, biotechnology, prosthetics and orthotics, and biomedical engineering. So some of these programs might be less familiar to you, so I'll try and give a quick overview. Next slide, please. So these are field, excellent fields for people who are curious and fascinated by science. If you're process oriented and accurate, if you're self-sufficient, if you're able to work independently as part of a team, and if you're able to work well under pressure. Students should also have keen observational skills and solid communication and interpersonal skills. And similar to the other programs that were mentioned, our website is a great resource for program specific, specific requirements. And as well, our program heads are always happy to answer any questions that you might have. Next slide, please. Our programs vary in length. Um, from being 13 months from clinical genetics to up to two and a half years for the different programs. Can you go to the next slide, Erin? There, there we go. So that gives you a highlight. And we can go to the next slide, please. So first I'm gonna speak about medical laboratory science. So just to share a fact that um, med lab techs perform over 1.2 million lab tests every day in Canada, including tests for COVID-19. They have been pivotal, pivotal frontline workers in the healthcare systems during the pandemic. BCIT's med lab program is the largest in Canada. Um, and it's one of two programs that exist in British Columbia. It's a 2.5 year program, which includes a 35 week clinical placement. So you'll do that either in one of the hospitals and you might go between one or two hospitals and between the um, private clinics of life labs. And you'll be ready to work as a technologist. It is in demand and the, you know we every grad is, is getting hired because there's uh, lots of vacancies and opportunities in this growing field. This is a competitive entry program. Um, so we'll be looking at marks and conducting interviews as well. Next slide, please. Clinical genetics. Um, so people entering this program require a Bachelor of Science first, and it's one of two programs that are in Canada. It's the only one in Western Canada, and it also includes a clinical placement as well. Clinical genetics technology is a program that trains you to use a variety of instruments to analyze and diagnose changes or abnormalities in chromosomes and DNA. Analysis of these cells can lead to diagnosis of genetic diseases. And just to um, share that, you know, we're moving into the new health science building, as was mentioned, and we've got some cutting edge equipment that we're getting um, for clinical genetics. So we're very excited about that in this program. Next slide, please. Food technology. So this is one that might not come as top of mind when you're thinking about health science programs, but it's a pivotal part um, of healthcare because um, having appropriate food knowledge keeps communities and individuals safe. 
Our BCIT Food Technology Diploma Program trains students in the basics of food technology, including food processing, quality control, food testing, and analysis. So we have lectures, we have labs, we have um, an area where students get to make different food and try different food. We go on different field trips to industry. So it's a fascinating um, place and program for people who are interested in the food industry. It's a two-year uh, full-time program. And as well, we do have part-time studies courses available if that's a route that interests you. Next slide, please. Environmental public health. So these are public health inspectors. Um, so this is a vital part of the public health team. Um, the role of public health officers is to prevent disease and pro promote healthy communities. They monitor food and drinking water, personal service establishments, recreational water facilities, and much more. Um, and environmental health graduates find employment with government and private industry. They use legislation, education, and promotion to protect our communities. And environmental health officers have also played a pivotal role in the healthcare. Um, they've been in demand during the pandemic. Um, and so when you do this program, it's a two-year program, which includes a practicum, which you will do in one of the healthcare agencies across um, British Columbia. Next slide, please. The next program I'm gonna talk about is occupational health and safety. So we have uh, two options for occupational health and safety. We have a full-time diploma program and we have part-time studies as well. So in our full-time program, we focus on business leadership and skills um, that gives students the tools they need to manage and implement and drive health and safety initiatives in any workplace. Similarly, our associate certificate does that as well. And it's more targeted at students who wanna pivot if they're already working in an industry and they wanna to pivot to a safety role. Safety roles are in demand, both in healthcare organizations and in industry. And we already have employers reaching up to snap up this year's grads and to also offer them summer employment. Next is prosthetics and orthotics. So this program, prosthetists and orthotists design and fabricate custom orthotic devices and provide lifelong treatment to those in need. The profession involves optimizing mobility and functionality through a combination of innovative technology, expertise and materials, biomechanics and direct patient care. It's rewarding, exciting and ever changing. So this is a two year full-time postgraduate diploma and it's followed by a paid two-year clinical residency. So we do our intakes every two years. The next intake is going to be September, 2022. So the application deadline is closing shortly. So this is a program, if you're really good with your hands, you're interested in technology and you enjoy helping people and solving problems, this is a great field. It's a competitive entry, but it's um, we've got lots of hands-on once you get to our program. And we even have within our facility at BCIT, both currently and when we move to the new building, we have a clinic where patients come and get treatment within our clinic. So it's a fantastic place to work. Next program, please. So biomedical engineering, it applies science and engineering to healthcare and medical device industries. Our grads help develop new medical devices and products, or they maintain specialized medical equipment that's used to support patient care. So if you're interested in engineering and healthcare, this might be the program for you. Um, entry is possible from high school and graduates are in demand in the hospital and the medical device companies. This program includes a practicum and it supports hands-on learning. So I'm gonna pass it over to Erin now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jennifer. Wow, that was a lot of programs that we just went through very quickly. And before we do anything else, I'm going to talk about one more set of programs. Uh, so BCIT has a number of forensic health programs, and you can check them all out on our website. But today I just want to highlight two uh, particular programs, our Forensic Nurse Examiner Micro-Credential micro and our Advanced Forensic Nurse Examiner micro-credential. So similar to the specialty nursing that Kathy Kennedy mentioned earlier, these programs are designed for people who are already registered nurses that have completed their Bachelor of Science in Nursing and are working and who want to uh, look into getting into the field of forensic nursing. Uh, so this might not be something that everyone's ready for here yet, but it might be something to keep in mind as your career progresses. 
Uh, once you do finish a nursing program, there are different options like this to go into. Um, and they're both fascinating programs and uh, new to BCIT as we roll out more and more micro credentials. Uh, they're just short. Uh, the, the first one here is a two, three credit, cor two courses, both online. So a short way to kind of get yourself some additional knowledge and to explore your options as moving into forensics. If you do have any questions about forensics at BCIT or any and any of our forensics programs, please do email the uh, address listed on the screen here. It's BCIT underscore forensics. And with that, I'm going to go to our next slide here. I just wanted to let you know. Um, as we went through, I don't know how many of you were on the website at the same time, but we have a number of our courses that or a number of our programs that require some post-secondary prerequisites, um, meaning some of them you can apply straight from high school, some of them you might need to have some uh, post-secondary courses first, and uh, BCIT does offer courses in anatomy and physiology, physics and psychology that can often be used uh, to fulfill those prerequisites or to upgrade ones of yours that are a couple of years old now. Uh, so that's another thing to check out um, through BCIT's uh, Basic Health Sciences Department. And the web address is on the screen there to check those out if you are in need of any of those types of courses. Just going through my notes here. Um, Next up, I want to let you know about a contest that you're all able to enter by registering and attending Big Info tonight. You have a chance to win one of $3,000 tuition prizes from BCIT. So there'll be a survey mailed out later this week to everybody by email. And if you check your inbox for that, if you complete the survey, you're able to enter this contest. So $1,000 off your tuition is a pretty good deal. So I urge everyone to complete that survey and get those get into that contest. And as always, big info is not the only way to connect with us. As we mentioned, we have info sessions. We have uh, virtual campus uh, highlights and 360 degree virtual campus highlights. We have our program advising department, which I would really recommend everybody attending tonight. Check that out. Program advisors can look at your specific transcripts, your goals, uh, what you're interested in applying for, what programs might be best suited to you. If you just Google BCIT program advising, you'll come up with all the information there on how to contact them, their office hours, their email, their phone number. Uh, we also have uh, other ways you can get in touch with us. You can check out bcit.ca slash experience for more ways to get in touch. And as we've mentioned a few times, and I'm going to mention again, in about two weeks time, February 28th to March 4th, we have our BCIT Health Sciences Info Session Week, where we are putting 20 different info sessions online. Uh, you can register online at bcit.ca slash info sessions. Registration is free, attendance is free. They're about 45 minutes long, so there's not a huge chunk of your time taken, and you can uh, join with us to ask, ask any questions. We'll give you information on how to apply, uh, what the career is like, what uh, their job possibilities are like, what our program is like, what it's like to be a student in the program, and information uh, that'll help you kind of make further decisions. Because I know tonight we really went a surface overview of all of our programs because we just had too many to dive deeply into. But Info Session Week is where you can really get that um, more specific information and really learn in depth about our programs. And I hope to see many of you then. So at this point, um, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions about health sciences program. Let's see if there's anything we can answer. I'm not seeing a lot of questions in the Q&A tonight. Um, normally we have a lot more than this. So please do feel free to type your questions into the Q&A. I uh, see we have a lot of these answered, uh, but I'm just looking to see if anybody has anything And I do, did hear that the link that I had put on the screen for info sessions didn't work, but if you just type into Google BCIT info sessions, you'll come up with the right link or bcit.ca slash info sessions will get you there. Any other questions this evening? We covered a lot of information very quickly tonight, so I know it's, a, it's always interesting. Um, we do have one question. I'm wondering if Denise from MedRad is on. Um, 
Hannah is asking, are there any additional courses for med rad that are recommended? So anything that's recommended beforehand. Now, Hannah, our prerequisites for med rad are listed on our website, but I wonder if Denise is online and might be able to speak to that at all. Hi, yes, I am. Um, so our prerequisites are anatomy and physiology from post-secondary. Um, so if you contacted um, program advising, they can give you um, the equivalencies. Uh, BCIT does offer part-time study courses um, for those subjects and also composition English um, because we uh, introduce an element of research into the program. Um, so we do like our applicants now to come in with um, experience and, and knowledge of writing good papers. Um, other than that, our focus is really on communication, critical thinking, um, and the anatomy and physiology portion. We do a lot on pathologies with our students, and so that's what the expectancy would be. I hope that answers your question, Hannah. Thank you, Denise. That's wonderful. Thank you for your willing to jump on to when I'm calling on you here. Um, and I believe Hannah, uh, our program advisor, Janice, is also typing some additional information or maybe some links in for you so that you can have that. Um, and I'm wondering if somebody from nursing, whether that's Shelly or Dina or Loreen, would like to answer a question. Um, a man is asking, is it true if you take the anatomy and physiology at BCIT, you can apply for the nursing program? It's a little more complex than that, Eman. So I'm wondering if, um, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, I'm wondering if somebody can speak to that or speak to taking prerequisites here rather than somewhere else. Shelly, you're on mute, but I see your face is up. So maybe you can. <laughs> I think Dina was going to answer. Oh, Dina, there you go. Oh, hi, Dina. Um, you can. You must have six credits of physio of half of anatomy and physiology, and yes, you can take it at BCIT. I'm not sure what your question is, or you can take it anywhere. If you go to our website under View Acceptable Equivalent Courses, it tells you a number of places you can get that prerequisite. Thank you, Dina. I'm just looking through the, looks like uh, we've got program advising is very quick on answering questions tonight. So it looks like they're answering a bunch of these questions for me. So that's wonderful. Thank you, Janice. Um, I have a question from an anonymous attendee and I'm gonna answer it. It says, I'm a high school student. What courses would you recommend taking in post-secondary before applying to a program here? Um, now that is, a very interesting question because we don't have a single set of prerequisites for our programs at BCIT. And that's what makes us a little bit different from some other post-secondaries is that it really depends on which program you're applying to. So you really have to look at, okay, am I interested in biomedical engineering or am I interested in nuclear medicine? And what are their prerequisites? So uh, do go on bcit.ca and look through the programs listed there. Choose maybe a few that are of interest to you. Um, attend an info session maybe, uh, and then kind of look at what post-secondary requirements they have. But if you're still in high school, uh, what I always tell high school students, make sure you take as many sciences as you can. Because <laughs> if you've got your sciences covered, you've got a lot of, you've got yourself set up for, uh, for a lot of options going forward and you're not limiting yourself. So make, just take as many sciences as you can in, in high school. That's my best advice on that. I hope that answers your question. Okay, and with that, I don't think we have too much more kind of coming up. Uh, so I think we can end it about there, um, ending a little bit early this evening. So you have time to have a little break before the next session if you're staying online for that. If you're not, I just wanna thank you for joining us for BCIT's Big Info. Thank you for uh, joining us and learning about health sciences tonight. I hope to hear from you further in the future. I hope that we see you at one of our info sessions. Um, and again, this session has been recorded. So you will find it on YouTube probably early next week and you can rewatch, pause, go through it at your own pace because I know we did go th through a lot very quickly this evening. Thank you again for joining us. Hello and good evening, everybody, and welcome to BCIT School of Business and Media's Big Info Session. 
My name is Sheena Clarkson, Student Recruitment Specialist for School of Business and Media, and I'm joined today with my colleagues Maria Bushman, Student Recruitment Specialist, Eva Wong, International Program Advisor with School of Business and Media, as well as our lovely Program Advisor, Janice Pontes. This session is being recorded. It will be posted to YouTube in the next week or so. This means that some of your personal information may be potentially shared on YouTube as well as the BCIT webpage. If you do have any questions during our session, please feel free to put it in the chat and one of us will be happy to answer. Questions not answered in the chat will be answered at the end of our session where we will have a quick Q&A session. Please note, if you are interested in learning more about any of our programs, feel free to sign up for any of our upcoming info sessions at bcit.ca slash info sessions. The British Columbia Institute of Technology is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam nations. So for our agenda for this evening, we're gonna tell you a bit about the School of Business and Media. We'll talk about how our programs are delivered, all of the programs that we have available in part and full-time studies, our bachelor's degrees, graduate certificates, international opportunities, and we'll end up with our quick Q&A session. So first off, the School of Business and Media. So BCIT School of Business and Media is one of the largest business schools in Western Canada. We have over 30 full-time programs, 65 part-time programs, as well as over 300 part-time studies courses in the following areas, accounting, finance, and insurance, broadcast and media communications, business administration, human resources and sustainability, digital arts, media, and design, marketing management, as well as operations management. Our school has uh, operates on two different campuses. So the majority of our programs will be found on the Burnaby campus. We also have many of our part-time studies as well as some of our full-time studies programs taking place in the downtown Vancouver campus. Uh, BCIT School of uh, Business and Media, 40 to 50% of your time will be spent in applied learning. What this means is the environment that you're learning in will mimic the environment that you'll have during your job. So a lot of your programs will be spent doing case studies with industry professionals, practicums and internships, industry sponsored consulting projects, or using industry standard software within the classroom. Another thing about BCIT School of Business is that we specialize in cohort learning. What this means is that we have small class sizes, so you get the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one attention from your faculty and get to know and network with your peers better. A typical class size at BCIT School of Business and Media is typically between 24 and 27 students. Um, next slide. Uh, another key thing about our programs is that we are industry connected. What this means is that all of our instructors come from the industry and bring their expertise to the classroom. Another benefit of this is that they will be able to teach you things that are relevant to the workplace, as well as key things to help you get an edge in the career, in your future career. Uh, BCIT credentials are industry recognized. What this means is School of Business and Media programs 92% of our degree grads are employed within six months of graduation, and 91% of our diploma grads are employed within six months. We are really proud of these stats, and we know that the education that you get from BCIT will help you get a career quickly. So what makes us different? Well, one of the first things is, is that the skills in our labs are applied to real life situations. So everything that you're gonna learn is hands-on and applied. All of our classes mimic industry expectations. So what you learn in your classes will be something that you'll use when you're in the workforce. Um, a lot of our cohort learning helps you develop leadership and teamwork skills. Our courses are also more in depth than anywhere else. And we're also connected with business, industry, and government, which means that all of our courses are consulted with businesses and the industry lets us know if we need to develop courses to meet their needs, as well as if the government is seeing opportunities that BCIT can help meet their needs as well. So program delivery. At School of Business and Media, we have three different types of program delivery. 
first up is part-time studies. So if you're interested in participating in any part-time studies courses, these are done on a course by course basis. It gives you the flexibility of completing courses while also working or participating in something else. Our part-time studies courses are available in Burnaby, downtown, as well as online. Um, program acceptance is not required before taking a course. So what this means is if you're interested in taking a course just to check it out, you can feel free to register for that course without um, applying to a program. Uh, the tuition fees are available online on each course description, and you can register online or call our student information enrollment services if you'd like to enroll for a course. Our part-time studies courses um, for spring summer, uh, we're looking at starting enrollment or they're open February 23rd. Next up, we have our full-time studies. So with our full-time studies programs, uh, typically you're um, automatically registered in all the courses that you need for your program completion. So what this means is, unlike other schools where you have to register for each course individually, when you're accepted into a program, uh, all your courses are chosen for you. Um, the tuition fees are available online and most of them are in Burnaby, but some are downtown. Our classes for full-time studies are typically Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 5.30. Um, a question that we commonly get is, when is the deadline to apply for our full-time studies? Well, we've got two different program application processes. So first off is first qualified, first accepted, which is the majority of our programs. So this means that we are accepting applications until the program is full. So if, you're, if you meet all of the entry requirements and there's space, you may be accepted into the program. The next is our competitive program, so HR management as well as business management. So for these programs, applications are accepted until the application deadline, and then all the applications will be assessed, and then successful candidates will be contacted. Um, applications for most of our programs are accepted starting October 1st uh, for the following year. Lastly, we have our online studies. So some of our courses and a few of our programs may be offered online. Uh, please refer to the individual program page for any additional details. Uh, when choosing courses online, there's three different types of delivery models. So the first one is synchronous, which means that it requires regular attendance to weekly scheduled lectures. Uh, the next is asynchronous, which is typically kind of at your own pace, but generally you'll follow the instructor week by week as you move through the course content. And then lastly, there's a hybrid of blended courses, which will have both both online and in-class components. So next up is Maria Bushnan, the other student recruitment specialist, and she will be telling you about our programs. Thank you all. Awesome, wonderful, and thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. And thank you so much, Sheena, for giving us a quick overview of all, what we, of all we have to offer at BCIT and at School of Business. So we do offer quite a few programs. So starting off, we're gonna start with our accounting, finance and insurance program. So for this one, we do have our full-time diplomas, which are accounting, finance, financial planning, as well as general insurance and risk management. And then we do have our degree program. So that's our bachelor's of accounting. And also our diplomas can ladder into the bachelor of business administration. We'll get into that in a bit here. So, so some of our star graduates from all of our programs, as, mentioned, as Sheena mentioned earlier, we have a fantastic employment rate across the school of business. So we have people working at Fortis, at Shell, we have people working at Nicola Wells, and we have people working at Sovereign General Insurance Company. We have many career opportunities and many happy grads from our programs. Now, a, a quick, little quick overview of what to expect from our county finance insurance program. So usually our graduates have about a $20, $25 average hourly wage for those um, in training related job. We, and we have a 93 to 100% employee rate depending on our program. One big, one big thumbs up we have the general insurance and risk management program it does have 100% job placement rate. And these are all based on our 2021 BC student outcomes. They are associated with many professional debt um, associations and you can, you can start yourself off on your journey to many professional designations through these programs. Some career opportunities include financial planning, maybe you want to be an accountant, financial analyst, investment specialist, claims investigator, internal auditor, or a broker slash agent. These are going to be the diplomas and programs you're looking at. Now, we also have our part-time programs in accounting, finance, and insurance. So you can do our bachelor's degree part-time. You can also do the professional accounting advanced diploma in part-time studies, as well as the diploma. So accounting, finance, and financial planning. The certificate can be a financial management certificate or finance and professional accounting certificates, and you have associate certificates, which are computerized accounting, financial planning, 
and payroll and human resources. And in this photo is actually our wonderful graduate Poonam who works at Fortis BC. Um, we, we, do have, we do offer program sessions here at BCIT School of Business and Media. So that means that you get one-on-one -on -one time with a subject matter expert. Usually it's a program head, it can be an associate dean or faculty members from this department. And for our full-time programs, we have some coming up. We have one in March, one in May, and one in June. And for Advanced Diploma in Professional Accounting, which is held by the wonderful program head, Daniela Raquel, it is on March 8th at 12 p.m. These sessions will have a presentation, and then you'll have a question and answer period where you're gonna get some one-on-one -on -one time to ask all the questions you might have. At the moment, given COVID, they are all held on Zoom. You can register for all of them at bit.ca slash info sessions for all of our programs. Moving on, we have our broadcast and media communications program. So the diplomas in this one that are available, which will be broadcast online journalism, radio arts and entertainment, TV video production, and also with the completion of the four digital bridging courses, you can actually bridge these diplomas into our bachelor's of business administration. Um, graduates, so we have, we have people working at CBC, we have people working at CTV, and we have people um, working on Entertainment One. You've probably heard one of our grads on the radio, probably seen one of our grads um, on the news channel. They end up everywhere and they're all extremely talented. Um, they're making about 17 to $20 right out of the bat. And we have an 80 to 100% employment rate within these programs. So you can be a video journalist, maybe you wanna be a news anchor, on-air host, a freelance producer, potentially online writer and editor, camera operator, digital audio producer, or production coordinator. We have courses for all of these and we have fantastic equipment. We have fantastic staff to give you that hands-on learning to be successful in these programs. Now they do have some part-time studies uh, programs. They're a little more limited in this department, but we do have our associate certificates. Uh, we in broadcast digital journalism, music business, radio arts and entertainment and video production editing. Uh, you can also do, as mentioned, the BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration on a part-time basis with four digital bridging courses, and they do offer micro-credentials. Now, micro-credentials are pretty, are decently new to BCIT, but they pretty much, they're very short, very specialized um, courses to really get you quick knowledge on a very specific topic. So for example, social media um, and broadcast, freelance producing, investigative research, script supervision, or the art of photography, just small little bite-sized courses to get you a quick and easy knowledge on these topics. Now, the upcoming sessions for broadcast media is going to be March 1st, April 7th, and May 10th. These are focused primarily on our full-time programs, but we do have um, our, our, part, our part temp studies coordinator as well, who um, is available there to answer many of your questions. And as with the other ones, you can register for them online, bsecu.ca slash info sessions. Uh, business administration, a bit of a bigger department. So we for diplomas, we have our human resource management and also business management uh, diplomas, these are full time. Uh, now, one thing to mention about these two programs is that they are competitive entry programs. So unlike any of our other programs that go on, um, kind of we admit people as we go or as you apply, as long as you met, meet the requirements. For these programs, you we review all the applications and only let a certain amount of people into the program due to their competitive nature. We have, now the degree is a bachelor of business that Bachelor of Business Administration, sorry, I can't talk today, is also in this department. We also have our Advanced Diploma in Sustainable Business Leadership and our Graduate Certificate in Global Leadership, which is brand new as of this, um, this fall semester. Now graduates, as we have, we have Jacob who works at Lululemon, we have Mariana who actually is a co-founder of our very own company and also a product manager at Refinery. We have, we have Nikki from Maritzia or we have another Lululemon, clearly Lululemon likes our grads and we're not complaining because we also love Lululemon. So right out of the bat, you're looking at $17, $26 an hour and we're looking at an 83 to 100% uh, employment rate as mentioned across the board, fantastic employment rate for all our grads from school business and media. And if you're looking to go into HR, maybe you're going to recruitment, maybe you want to be a general manager, work with business development, um, work on your work on different other manager positions, maybe a data analyst, or even an account services coordinator, um, this is going to be the place for you. Or even if you're looking at some of our part-time courses, these are going to, in, in this department, it's, it's important that you take these courses when you're trying to step into a management role. Maybe you're just going to start beginning to manage a larger team just really to give you that slight edge to maybe get that promotion you need or maybe to get those management experiences. 
So you can do our BBA part-time bachelor of business administration degree. Um, you can also do a business management advanced diploma as well as a sustainable business leadership advanced diploma, which is available both in full-time and in part-time studies. Uh, you can do your business administration diploma. You can do certificates of business management and human resource management. Fun new addition is our human resource management certificate actually just recently got accredited by CPHR. That means that if you've graduated from this program since uh, February 1st, 2012, you could be eligible to get your CPHR designation and also be um, exemption from writing the national knowledge exam. More information on that can be found on the program page and also um, in our info sessions, which I'll come up with the dates in just a second. We offer quite a few associate certificates and also quite a few statements of completion in this department as well. If you have questions about our full-time programs, you're gonna be looking at either the March, April, May, or June info sessions. If you'd like someone on one time with wonderful program head Mark Nakamura for global leadership, you're looking at February 22nd. Sustainable business leadership, you get one on one time with the program head Tessa Jordan, February 28th. Medical office assistant, that's also, um, that's also one of, that's actually um, under our digital arts umbrella, but we'll get into that in a moment. And then PTS, if you're looking for PTSHR and leadership, so that's the certificate in human resource management that has recently been accredited by CPHR. You will be looking at March 29th, and that is with our PTS coordinator, Richard Miles, to answer all your questions. Digital arts and media, our biggest department that we're going to talk about, that they have different courses within communication and graphics, web mobile, animation, and gaming, and they also, you can ladder into the degree with four additional um, bridging courses into the BBA specifically. Graduates work everywhere. We have a lot of graduates end up working at EA, Bold Media, Total Graphics. Atomic Cartoons, people are working in Epic Inspired, COVID Design, Triforce Media. We do get a lot of people working at EA, but our graduates work everywhere and they are all extremely talented and, are, and great at their art. So when you're coming out, you're looking at 20 to $28 an hour when you're coming out of here and it's a 68 to 100% employment rate, quite the variety because this is, a quite, this is a department with quite a bit of variety within it. So if you're looking at graphic design, digital print operations, digital media, being a digital media specialist, maybe you're looking to UX UI design, maybe you're looking to be a technical or a character artist, there's something for you within this department. Now they do offer some part-time programs. So the Advanced Diploma and Technical Arts is available online. And it's also, um, you can get your certificates in media techniques, media techniques for business and web technologies. We have associate certificates and things like UI and UX design as well as web technologies. And we also have a couple things for the completion to just give you those quick, um, just those quick little bits of knowledge to make sure, make you ready to maybe just specialize in a different part in your role. Now we have quite a few info sessions coming up for this one as well. And these ones, um, the way they work, you actually get to go into breakout rooms because there's so many programs within this department that you start with a presentation and then you move into a breakout room with each program head or staff representative from the program and you get someone on one time to speak about the program itself. This is great for this kind of department because it is huge and there's so many different programs to choose from. We have for full-time programs, March, April, May, and June. We have some upcoming sessions coming your way. And also for part-time programs, we have one in March and we have one in May. Getting through, we have marketing management. So, so with marketing management, it is in a bit of a different way of handling things. So you all share a common first year where it is all general marketing management courses. And then you get to pick your specialization in year two. So the specializations you can go for are entrepreneurship, marketing communications, professional sales, professional real estate, which is brand spanking new, and tourism management, and also bachelor business administration, which I'm sure you have heard me say so many times during this presentation, but we're very proud of it. And it's a wonderful credential. Now our graduates also work everywhere we have. And from here, we have graduates from all different years, including a very recent one, Hannah Russell, who is currently working at Herschel. We have um, the present CEO of N-Wave is a BCIT grad, and even things like um, ITIQ recruiters. Our marketing grads work just about everywhere and thrive in all their environments. I know myself and Sheena, we are both marketing management grads from two different options. Now you're looking at 20 to 24 hours an hour um, starting out of the gate. And then for career opportunities, you can do pretty much anything. So if you want to do marketing, coordinating, brand strategy, media buying, um, maybe you want to be a hotel sales operator, maybe you want to be student recruitment specialist, 
maybe you want to be a junior copywriter, you're going to find something in these programs and it helps you develop those skills. And we're looking at 79 to 100% employment rate um, as of 2021. We have some part-time programs available as well. Lots of associate certificates here. So if you're looking to just kind of get yourself to the next level, or maybe you have um, a degree or a diploma in a different area, and you're looking to really maybe just focus in and start your own business or something like that, obviously you can look at event marketing, fundraising management. Maybe you want to get into retail marketing um, management or really touch up, maybe you're stepping into a tourism related role and you want to get a little bit of a touch up on tourism and hospitality. There's an associate certificate for you and our certificate, and there's a few certificates. And as mentioned, um, there's also a diploma, which is business administration, specifically in marketing. Upcoming info sessions, they're going to be March, April, May, and June, and also a couple part time ones in March and May. Um, now, with our part time ones, is with the wonderful Joe Freeburn. He is a fantastic wealth of information and very, very helpful. Now, moving on to operations management, our final our final department that we're going to talk about today, we have our business information technology management diploma, which has two different options, either artificial intelligence management or enterprise systems management. We have BOM, business operation management, and global trade and transportation management. This used to be called international, um, it used to be called by different name, international business, and now it is global trade and transportation management as of this past year. Uh, we again, these will also ladder into the BBA, and we also have a graduate certificate in business analytics. Our graduates also work in quite the different amount of areas. I'm sure you've seen Jessica's face a couple of times in this presentation. She is a consultant for urban systems. We also have people working in ECI software solutions and also business systems development University of Canada. Within here, it's about 20 to $29 average when you're coming out, and then on 78 to 100% employment rate. You can work, you can work into quite a few professional designations here working in these programs. And for career opportunities, obviously you can be an operations manager. Or you can also be a supply chain manager. You're looking at quality improvement specialists, purchasers, custom brokers agents, and everything over, all, all the way over to a business AI analyst. Um, you can do now for our part-time programs, you can do uh, various certificates, you can also do associate certificates and a couple. Um, statements of completion. You can also do project management workshops. So we do have our, an associate certificate in project management, but you can also do quick condensed workshops in that. If you do come to our info sessions for that one in our part-time programs, Ron Wallach will be able to explain it very clearly how our project management program is very, very popular and fills up very quickly. And he has an upcoming session on March 31st to go over that information with you. For full-time programs, this one also uses breakout rooms, so you get some one-on-one -on -one time with program heads. Our upcoming one is March 10th. We also will have one in April, one in May, and one in June. Now, I've talked a few about degree programs. So, to ladder your, you can ladder your business and media diploma into a degree with one additional year of study. So, for example, if you did your diploma in marketing management, let's say you did the entrepreneurship option that took you two years full-time. If you do one additional year to do your core course as well as some elective courses, you can actually then finish your BBA in three years total. So two-year diploma, one-year BBA, and you'll get your Bachelor of Business Administration in this specific, um, in this specific question, uh, scenario. So they are offered on full-time and part-time. So you're gonna get about eight to 12 months in full-time and approximately two to five years part-time, depending on how many courses you're taking and things like that. Obviously, if you're working full-time, we don't recommend you take a bunch of courses, maybe one or two to start. School business and media degree graduates have a 92% employment rate with a mean salary of $55,000 within six months of graduation. For the Bachelor of Business Administration, you just need to require, you need to complete a BCIT um, school business diploma. As mentioned with a couple of things like digital arts and broadcast, you might have to do some bridging courses, but for other departments, it can be directly in there. Now, a Bachelor of Accounting, you do require a completion of a specifically a finance accounting or financial planning diploma. So it can't be any diploma, it has to be within that department or else you will have to do some additional courses. Um, so Eva is actually part of the Global Relations Department and they are also within our realm. So they offer quite a few awesome global opportunities. So they spend, so you can spend an exchange term abroad at one of our 20 partner universities in 15 countries. You can earn a degree at an international business school through a double degree program. You can also participate in a summer field school which they are running this 
year. Thank God COVID didn't get to take those away from us again. Um, you can do in Austria and Italy, Belgium and the Netherlands, and also Japan. You can plan your international experience by contacting SOBIEP at BCC.ca if you are interested. Now, we're now to plug our little Big Info at Home contest. So by registering and attending Big Info, you have a chance to win one of three $1,000 tuition prizes for BCIT. Complete your entry by submitting a, the Big Info survey. Check your inbox on February 18th. If you have any questions, please reach out at the information below. Now, we have a few other ways to connect with us. So you can learn more about BCIT by attending an info session. I've mentioned quite a few today. You can check out our 360 virtual campus highlights, connect with a program advisor as well. You can learn more about admissions and upgrading, or you can order a free copy of the 2022-2023 BCIT view book. You can get all the details at bcit.ca slash experience. And that does conclude our presentation part. And so now we have all the time to answer all your questions. I see that there are a couple. Um, one Janice is already opening up, up, handling a couple of them, but I'll get Sheena back on here so we can maybe try and answer some of your questions live if that works. We do not, we do not record our info sessions. We um, just do them live. We do can some, we can sometimes send the slides over to you if you um, would like, but normally we don't actually record them just with the fact of how many people ask questions and stuff like that. There's a lot of personal information being shared. So in regards to separate presentation for the 3D art and animation modeling program, there is not a separate presentation. You would have to attend the digital arts full-time info session. But um, as mentioned, you will be able to go into a breakout room with the program head, Bob Crute, and ask any questions you may like. And also that sometimes they'll just give you a bit more information in those breakout rooms. The initial presentation is pretty short. It's just an overview. And then once you get into the breakout room, you have enough time to ask all your specific questions. And we've just received a question from anonymous attendee. In the first year of marketing management diploma program, does the course or the program cover all of the options? Then in the second year, can we decide which area we want to specialize in? So yes, currently the marketing management program, uh, all of the first year is the same. You do get a little taste of all of the options prior to applying for your option uh, prior to the beginning of your second year program. And Sabim, I did just put up all the digital arts media and design info sessions that are coming up since you're interested in the ones with Bob. So that'll be these ones right here, March, April, May, or June. And you can sign up for them on right here, the BCDSDA slash info sessions if you are interested. Business Analytics is meant for people who are working full-time. So it is a nighttime program. It is listed as a full-time program because it isn't offered on a course by course basis. Yeah, you're, it's offered as a program, but the courses are, it's not, a full like six courses per semester it's much fewer than that and they all offer evenings and weekends they are meant and designed for people who do have commitments during the day so i would say it's absolutely possible to be working full-time as long as it's during the day and not in the evening and also take that program um hello hannah thank you for your question uh the question is for business operations management program do we get the timetable already assigned from the department or do we get to choose the time i'm a new student for fall 2022 and excited for the program well thank you for your question hannah we're very excited that you're excited to join us in fall 2022 to answer your question uh the schedule will be chosen for you and provided to you from your instructors this is one of the great benefits of bcit's full-time diplomas is that your schedule is created for you so that you are enrolled in all of your classes all at once i hope that answers your question so we do have a question from Melissa. This one is, if I already have a BBA with a marketing specialty and want to go into the human resources field, what is the most beneficial path, a diploma or a certificate? So my recommendation for you is to sign up for our information session for HR and business management, as you'll have an opportunity to speak directly to our instructors who do work in the industry and will be able to give you better guidance on your experience and which program is the best fit for you. So I will put the link to that session into the chat and we hope to see you there. Uh, our next question is from Taylor McKenzie Gillespie. Uh, what can I do to best prepare for my mark, uh, my program this fall? I've been accepted into marketing management diploma. First off, congratulations. Uh, as you know, Maria and I are both alumni of the marketing management diploma. And I think her advice would probably be the same as mine because the program is full service. Everything that you need to know will be in the program from day one. So just arrive with an open mind, open heart, ready to work hard. 
Next up is, will it be possible to take some marketing management along with part-time courses at the same time? Uh, so my recommendation will be don't do that, especially at the same time. Your marketing management schedule, you will be um, scheduled into about seven or eight courses in your first term. Um, and you'll, you probably won't have that much free time because when you're not in classes, you'll be doing group work for seven to eight of your classes. Um, if you are considering taking part-time studies courses prior to starting marketing, I would definitely reach out to the program head and get some recommendations on what would be the best courses to do that. Um, following up with that, if you would like to speak to the associate dean or for any program heads, um, you can definitely attend one of our info sessions for marketing management. Uh, so we do have a question from EJ asking, are there any programs uh, offered in a fast track manner? Um, so BCIT programs are kind of considered already a fast track. Um, if you have any more specific examples, maybe we can give a more detailed answer. Um, but our programs are quite condensed and get you through to finish pretty quick. So um, we'd like to consider um, our diploma programs a fast track program. Um, we do have another question. Um, I'm an international student. Um, I'm in BC. And if I want to start a diploma in finance or accounting at BCIT, could I enroll in BCIT for the next term? Uh, so if you are asking about our full-time program, which starts in uh, September of 2022, um, applications are currently open. And if you do meet the entry requirements and there is space available, uh, you may apply. Um, if you're considering our part-time studies, our part-time studies for the finance, accounting, and insurance programs, um, the courses open as of February 23rd. And I do believe that the entrance requirements for our part-time studies finance courses have changed recently. Uh, so be sure to check the entry requirements page prior to registering for your part-time studies course. So I see a question of what exactly are the requirements for the diplomas based on my status? Um, as a day, my suggestion to you is to, when you decide which specific program that you are interested in, uh, make an appointment with program advising and they will tell you uh, the best approach to applying to the program. Um, next question is, I studied journalism in Afghanistan and worked in the media for about 10 years. And I'd like to work in the same section here and also study. Um, unfortunately, we cannot give out career advice as we are not trained in that field. However, if you are interested in our journalism program, what I can recommend is that you attend an upcoming broadcast and inform journalism information session in our broadcast and media department. And um, we will have an instructor who does a breakout session in that area that can speak to you directly about your experience and your fit for the program. I see a question of, I'm looking at the communication design essentials. I'm preparing to fulfill the requirements. Please let me know the soonest time. Uh, Jasmine, I'm assuming you're wondering what is the soonest time to apply. Uh, we recommend as soon as you've met all of the entry requirements to apply as soon as you can before the program is filled. Um, if you are looking for more guidance on your application, I recommend that you reach out to program advising. Oh, yes, so um, as it is asking how to connect to a BCIT advisor, uh, Janice, our program advisor here today with us, is going to let you know the best way to reach out to program advising. Um, is it possible to transfer from SFU to one of the business programs? I'm in my second year. Uh, so the way it works, um, if you're interested in transferring from full-time from SFU to a full-time diploma at BCIT, is um, we may accept up to two courses per term um, in transfer credit for the full-time programs. However, um, I would recommend first that you speak to program advising uh, to see um, what would be the best path. And then as well, speak to um, a department head of the program, just to make sure that if you are seeking transfer credit, that um, it doesn't interrupt any of the full-time courses that you require. Uh, some things to think about with transfer credit is if you do get qualified for transfer credit, that your tuition for your program will not be reduced and you will not, um, your, pro your tuition won't be reduced and you will only get a study block. So it won't shorten, shorten the length of your program. 
um, as well as um, it might take away from some of the learning opportunities and experiences um, as a part of the full-time programs. Um, so we have a question of, if I would like to study another profession such as plumbing or electricity, can you tell me how I can be included in these courses? Unfortunately, we are unable to provide guidance on this. Um, my best suggestion would be to attend a big info session from School of Transportation um, and Trades, which I can let you know if that session's happened yet. Just one second. Yes, so that evening, so tomorrow night from 6.30 to 8 is the Trades and Apprenticeship Programs um, info session for Big Info, as well as from 6.10 to 6.25 is Apprentice Services. So um, Nassar, if you're interested in plumbing and electricity, that'll likely be your best bet. We have about 10 minutes left of our session. Uh, we'll be here for any other questions that you may have. Thank you so much for attending our info session at Big Info. Um, if you are interested in learning more about any of the programs that you heard about tonight, uh, feel free to register for any of our upcoming info sessions. Maria and I will be at every session, so we'll be more than happy to follow up with you if you have any further questions at those sessions as well. Uh, next question. Is there an option to be transferred into the second year of marketing specialization diploma from the business management diploma program? Um, so if you are currently in the business management diploma program, I would encourage you to speak directly to the associate dean of the marketing management program to see if that is a good fit and if there's any additional bridging courses that you may need from part-time studies to meet the requirements in the first year. Um, let's see. In digital arts development and marketing, do you need to choose one? Um, so Sarah, I'm unclear about your question. Um, that might be referring to the department, um, the digital arts and media. So um, that's just the department. Uh, the programs underneath are individual. Um, so we do have a question. Can I defer to the next intake from the originally intended intake if an unexpected personal matter comes up and what does it cost? Um, as far, I think, hmm. Janice, I hope you can help me out Would with Would you this. like me to answer that? Please do. Absolutely. That, that's a very straightforward answer. Um, if you apply to a program and you have paid your commitment fee for that program and then you decide against it, um, you will lose your commitment fee. And if you're interested in taking the program the following year, you will have to reapply. Um, that seat won't roll to the next intake. So you will be giving that seat up and then you need to apply October 1st for a seat for the following year. And if, if you apply for a business program in a timely manner um, in October, it, you've, you've got a very good chance of, of getting a seat in that program the following year if, if you have to decline um, this current year. So that's the answer. Thanks, Janice. Do you remember how much it costs? <laughs> well, it's $90 to apply, but I believe to hold your seat, it's $500. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's gone up. So you will lose that $500. Um, if you uh, keep your seat in the program, however, that $500 does go towards your tuition fee. So keep that in mind uh, before you make that final decision of, of accepting that seat in the program for sure. Thanks so much. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> nope. You two know, know things that I don't know, and I might know a few things that you know, so it's a good team. We're happy to have you here, Janice. Thank you. All right, everybody, we're in our last five minutes of the evening. Any last questions that you have for us before we have to go? 
Um, so we received a question, when does the application intake close? So the majority of the School of Business diploma programs uh, are first qualified. So what that means is if you've met the entrance requirements and there's space, then you may have a seat in the program. Um, so what that also means is we don't always know when the intakes close. Sometimes our programs are popular and they fill up quickly. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time. Um, you can always reach out to program advising to see, get an idea of if the, Absolutely. how the program's doing. And if you, if you go to BCIT's webpage and you, would, you do a search under program availability, uh, it will tell you what programs are still accepting seats and which programs are full for the upcoming uh, September intake. Um, and as well, at the top of uh, most of the programs in business, whether it be the opening page or entrance requirements, if the program is full for the year, at the very top of the page, there'll be, there'll be a, um, a box that says the program is full and closed for this year. So some business programs are full and closed, but there are many programs that are still accepting seats as well. So if you, if you do a search in program availability, all of those available uh, programs will come up for you. Okay, well, it looks like we've gone to the end of our questions today. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for all your questions. There was quite a bit of them. And we're so grateful to have you all here. We hope to see you at some room post sessions. We hope to see you in our programs. And we bid you all a good night from the School of Business and Media. Thanks so much, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Galley. I'm the Director of International Recruitment and Admissions at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. Thank you for joining us for the International Student Recruitment and Admissions session. Uh, we'll have three different set segments to this presentation. One on recruitment and admissions, one on the International Student Services, and one on the International Credential Evaluation Service. Um, that's, thank you. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit generally about BCIT. It's, uh, we say it's very intensive study at BCIT. And of course, this is a very complex world we live in, but BCIT really challenges you um, in terms of the, uh, the number of course hours. So a typical program at BCIT in a, in a two-year diploma would be between 110 and 140 credits. That means you're in class, in school, between 25 and 32 hours a week. It's uh, again, very intensive. Um, for every hour in school, you can count on one hour of uh, homework and assignments. So it's a full job and a half. Um, but you know, that sounds, that may sound intimidating, but the benefit to you when you get through your two year diploma is enormous because the postgraduate employment rates at BCIT are extremely high and that's what we're all about. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, if you're not here with us in Vancouver and you're not sure where British Columbia and Vancouver are, we, we are on the west coast of Canada where Canada is a very large country uh, stretching from the uh, Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. And we're right on the Pacific uh, west coast you can, can see in the, uh, in the picture here. Okay, next slide. Uh, we were founded in 1964. We're quite quite a large institution with uh, between 48 and 50,000 students enrolled annually. Uh, due to COVID, that number might have dropped by a couple of thousand, but um, usually we're at around 48,000 students. And that makes us one of Canada's larger uh, post-secondary institutions. Again, pre-COVID pandemic, we had over 6,500 international students and they came from 116 countries. Uh, that number again dropped, dropped a little bit during the pandemic, but not as much as uh, one might think. And since 1964, we have, we have um, graduated over 200,000 people. Next. Now, BCIT is different from a college or university. Um, we're an institute of technology. First and foremost, you have to understand that if you're studying at BCIT, you will be learning the theory half the time and practicing the theory half the time. So we teach you and we make you practice over and over. So when you graduate, you're coming out with skills and they're skills that employers want. And that's why um, one of the main reasons why our students will find jobs so easily after they graduate. 
class sizes are small. In a program like heavy duty truck technology, there are a maximum of 16 students. In a computing program, it'll be 24, 25. The largest classes you'll see at BCIT are in the School of Business, and that's 28. So this, these are very small numbers, and that gives you a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your instructors, a lot of in individualized instruction and guidance. Again, great reasons why um, our students learn so much in such a short period of time. Now, two of the key uh, reasons that, again, make BCIT stand out are the industry experience instructors. You cannot teach at BCIT unless you've worked in your industry. So every single instructor has worked in their industry and they bring to the classroom their knowledge of the industry, their knowledge of the subject. And um, you know they'll teach you the skills and they'll also teach you what to expect when you enter that industry. The program advisory committees are the other way that we stay so closely connected to industry. So every program at BCIT has a program advisory committee. The program advisory committee is comprised of individuals from different companies around uh, British Columbia. Those individuals will meet with our faculty in the program uh, to advise them on what is changing in the industry, what kind of skills um, will graduates from our programs require, and that allows our faculty to modify the programs and make sure that they are keeping in step with the needs of industry. And that's why when you graduate, you are career ready right from the start. Next. We have six, uh, five campuses at BCIT. The main camp campus is in Burnaby. And Burnaby and, and Vancouver are basically side by side. Uh, Burnaby is part of the greater Vancouver area as is Richmond where the aerospace campus is. But again, the main campus is in Burnaby. It's 164 acre uh, campus, very large, uh, great facilities here for, for students to practice in all areas. The Vancouver downtown campus is our technology hub. And that's right at the core, right at the uh, heart of the downtown area. The aerospace technology campus in Richmond is, is right next to the international airport. And that is a phenomenal campus, as is the Anasis Island campus, where we do the heavy duty truck technology program. Uh, the Marine campus is, is on the North shore. Um, international students don't really go into those programs because one must be a permanent resident or citizen to work on the coastal waters. So we can't really accept international students into the marine programs. Next slide, please. So what does all of that add up to? All of those uh, great points about BCIT. When you graduate with a diploma, 91% of our graduates will find employment within the first six months of graduating. If you graduate with a bachelor degree, that number goes up. Uh, let's flip to the next slide, please, to 98%. So it, intuitively, you would say, okay, I have more education, I, I can earn more, or I can get a job more easily. But the reality is that many of the students who finish the diploma go out and look for a job, but, but some of them will go directly into the bachelor degrees. So they don't even look for a job after the diplomas. So that's one of the reasons why the number of uh, the number related to the diploma graduates is a little bit lower. But many of the programs I know of, 100% of the students come out of the program and get a job. Um, the heavy duty truck technology program has 100% postgraduate employment. Um, general insurance and risk management, 100% postgraduate employment. You know, year to year that might change slightly, you know, might be 98%, but it, again, very, um, very high levels of postgraduate employment coming out of these degree and diploma level programs. Now we have over 300 programs at BCIT, but only 150 are available to international students. And they're in areas of business and media, computing, information, tech, uh, engineering, applied sciences, uh, health sciences, transportation, trades, um, vocational and apprenticeship programs. Now, this is an example of one of the diploma level programs. The geomatics engineering technology is 136.5 credits. 
That is more than a four-year bachelor degree in most universities, but you're doing it in two years. So it is very intensive, compressed education, and every single course that you are studying is related to your subject. There are no general education courses. So level one, level two, level three, level four, that's four semesters. You finish in two years, you complete 136.5 credits. You are ready for employment. Next slide, please. Admissions requirements at BCIT. Um, there are two models, basically. Um, when you are applying to a program, it's either first qualified, first accepted, or um, a competitive entry model. So the first thing you'll do when you are checking out the admissions requirements for a program is go to entrance requirements. The next slide, please. And you will see the application processing. So this particular program, Computer Systems Technology, is a competitive program. So there's a start date, October 1st, and a deadline, March 6th. You must apply before the March 6th uh, deadline to, to be able to compete for a seat in the September intake. If you miss that, then you can apply between March 15th and August 28th for the winter intake. Uh, it's, it is competitive, so your English and your math scores are what we'll look at. Uh, the minimum requirements are quite low. Uh, this is a very competitive program. You would need scores more like in the 80s and 90s to compete for a seat in this program. Next, please. In the uh, first qualified, first accept programs like general insurance and risk management, the entrance requirements are different. So next slide, please. You'll see it's uh, application processing, open to applications beginning October 1st, there's no deadline. So you need English and math. If you meet those two recommendations, uh, those two requirements, you would be accepted immediately. English requirements. Uh, most programs require high school grade 12 English with a 67% average. If, you're, if you didn't study in Canada or an English speaking country, then you might wanna take a language test like the KL, IELTS, TOEFL, Pearson, Cambridge, and you can see all the scores here. So the Kale is a 70, the IELTS 6.5, TOEFL 86, Pearson 60. We still accept the Duolingo test, but we will probably be phasing that out in after September, 2022. Application fees are $154. Um, if you are accepted to a program, you must pay a commitment fee of $3,000 to receive your letter of acceptance, which is um, approved by the Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada. And that's what you need to apply for your study permit. 60 days prior to the first to term start, you must pay the rest of your tuition. Tuition per semester is around $10,000, more or less. Uh, because you've paid the commitment fee already, then uh, 60 days prior to term start, you would need to pay the rest of your first term tuition, which would be $7,000. Then second term uh, tuition, you would pay after the start of second term. Okay, that's my segment. I'll pass it on to Tracy now to uh, tell us about the International Student Services. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending our info session. I know it's pretty late right now if you're in Vancouver, but if you are in another country, it might be in the morning. So anyway, uh, hi. Um, at BCIT, international students have access to a great number of services, resources, and facilities. In my presentation, I'm going to highlight the services provided to international students by the International Student Center team. Our support system consists of four components, government and institute compliance, transition and orientation, student engagement, and advocacy support. So it is important to understand immigration compliance requirements, the various types of permit and visas that may be required, and what responsibility that international students have. Next slide, please. Make sure to visit our permits, visas, and status page that provides a wealth of information and knowledge. It helps you to understand who needs a study permit, how to apply for or renew a study permit, what documents you may need about entering Canada, what is considered to be a full-time or part-time course load at BCIT, or whether you may be able 
to stay in Canada and work after your graduation. In addition, as an international student, you are responsible to maintain the appropriate ballot status in Canada at all times. So be sure to attend workshops that I'm going to mention later. Next one. It is also important to understand different types of a medical insurance that you need while studying in Canada. Basic medical insurance coverage is mandatory for all international students throughout your studies at BCIT. To navigate through all the information you need, make sure you can visit our medical insurance pages. Next one, thanks. During your studies, you may need a letter from BCIT for several reasons. This could be extending your study permit or your temporary uh, resident visa, inviting your family to visit Canada, applying for work or applying for a post-graduation work permit to understand the different letters available for you and verify if you meet all eligibility requirements to request a letter, you can visit our international letters of verification page. Next one. To help our students to understand studies in, at BCIT, International Student Center hosts international orientation events each term to provide an opportunity for connecting with your peers in person or virtually. We also have additional resources available online for you to explore at your convenience and at your own pace. The web guides and checklists provide comprehensive information such as pre-arrival checklist, getting set up, travel to Canada, navigating Metro Vancouver, or even housing guides. Next one. In partnership with the BCIT Student Association, we offer international peer mentoring program to help new students transition to life at BCIT and make meaningful social connections. You will be connected with other new BCIT students and getting a chance to learn from a BCIT student mentor who is a continuing student in good academic standing. Mentors will be able to share their perspective and knowledge of student life and BCIT and the Metro Vancouver area, as well as to do their best to answer questions or refer mentees to appropriate resources. Next one. Thanks. We offer various info sessions, workshops, and special events to international students throughout the term. You can join our virtual social gathering or in-person fun events like you see on this uh, slide. We sometimes also run international floor hockey um, in our campus or workshops to get the updates and information you need and stay informed. These various events and workshops not only provide good opportunities, to connect with the BCIT community and meet other international students, whether in, in your program or other programs, but also acquire info, important information, such as maintaining your academic status, study permit conditions, career planning, work eligibility, or post-graduation work permit explain, just to name a few. We also have a monthly international student newsletter called International Student Update. Our goal is to inform, inspire, and empower in serving the international community at BCIT. International Student Center works collaboratively with various departments at BCIT through an integrated support system. We recognize that not only international students need to meet academic requirements, but also in immigration requirements. If you attended earlier sessions, you may heard about our early assist system. We also have accessibility system uh, services to provide individual accommodation plan to students in need. Our counseling service supports our students' development and well-being. In addition, BCIT Student Association's Advocacy Office offers a non 
judgmental support and services to BCIT students in a safe space by working with the various departments and program areas we can offer a comprehensive solution to the unique needs of our international students. So we are here to support you. We want you to know that the International Student Center is open. We provide in-person and virtual dropping services. You can also reach us by phone, email, or follow us on social media. We encourage you to check out our website at bcit.ca slash international for a wealth of information and available resources to support you. That's the end of my presentation, thank you. Up next, Roger is going to present the International Credential Evaluation Service. Roger. Thank you so much, Tracy, and hello everyone, and good evening. Next slide, please. So as Tracy mentioned, I, my name is Roger Herr. I'm the manager of the International Credential Evaluation Service. So I'd like to just give you a brief overview of what ICS is. We are the International Credential Evaluation Service. We are the provincially mandated service in British Columbia. We are a service of BCIT and reside at the Burnaby campus. Basically, we're conducting research and doing evaluations for individuals who have completed their education outside of Canada. Uh, we make up an organization called the Alliance of Credential Evaluation Services of Canada more 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 shortened and known as ASIC. Next page. So you may be wondering what we're looking at with regards to uh, <clears throat> what we use for the evaluation. So mainly, these are the main factors that, that we review. The authenticity of documents. So are documents presented to us uh, legitimate? Uh, do they represent documents coming from a legitimate institution? We look at the academic credential one must hold in order to be admitted to the programs. Uh, the level and duration of the program, the program of study, and what access it's giving. So, for example, if an individual has a bachelor's degree from a from a country, does that give access to graduate level study or master's degree level study? And then finally, we look at the recognition status of the institution and the program itself, usually held within the Ministry of Education or another authority. Next page. Our timelines for our reports are general. So we have um, <clears throat> we have two streams of evaluations. We have a general evaluation and immigration. So the general evaluations are broken into a basic and a comprehensive. And we are about four weeks uh, for a basic and seven weeks for a comprehensive. For immigration reports, it actually does vary, but our posted timeline is actually 30 weeks. This uh, slide should have been updated on my apologies for that. So those are eva evaluations specifically for express entry. So individuals who are applying for immigration through IRCC. Next page. So with our fees, we do charge per credential. So individuals that want to have one credential evaluation completed, the fees are as follows. So an individual pays, for example, they want their bachelor's degree evaluated for employment purposes, it would be $128. If they were applying for a comprehensive, which shows their credits, grades, and uh, grade point average, then we would have to charge, we charge $230 per credential. For an ECA, which also is for immigration, so it's called an Educational Credential Assessment Report, we charge $200 per credential. And then for an update, basically for an individual who already has a pre-existing evaluation, it's $150. Next page. So individuals need to submit to us documents. Now, whether or not individual documents need to submit either original or official will depend on two things. First, uh, to whom they need to show the evaluation to. So individuals who are applying to an organization that require official documents, they will have to arrange for official documents. And that's whether it's a basic or a comprehensive. For all ECA applicants for immigration, they'll need to arrange for official documents, meaning that they'll need to contact their school, uh, requisition these documents to come directly uh, to our office, either by paper or by electronic form. And these are documents are uh, either a confirmation of their studies, including a transcript that lists their grades, credits, uh, <clears throat> and all information. Uh, for the ECA, it also they also need to submit a government ID in order to sh prove their identity. And if documents are not issued in English or French, they will have to submit um, a certified translation. It can be, it can originate from the home country, or they can contact an organization like STIBC, 
the Society of Translators and Interpreters of British Columbia to have a translation done, and then the documents can be accepted as such. Next, please. So you may be wondering what classifies an original document versus an official document versus a copy. So an original document is a document that an individual has in their own possession that has been issued by their school. So these documents often bear the proper seals, uh, signatures, stamps, formatting, uh, sometimes security features like a holographic sticker. Uh, these, are, these are documents, again, issued by the school uh, that are in your possession. Now, official documents are documents that come directly from your school and now are sent to our office. Now, these documents most likely will uh, be identical to the documents you have in your possession. However, the chain and integrity of the documents, since it's being sent directly by the school, uh, we deem them as official. Now for copies, uh, we don't actually recognize notarized copies because notar notaries are often not employees or, or officials from the institution themselves, but they're, they're designated in the document that they have in their uh, purview is exactly same as the document presented to them. So they're really, they're providing a verification, but they're not providing a verification where they're going to the next step and going to the school or the source institution to verify that those results are indeed uh, genuine. So that's why one of the reasons why we don't actually deem uh, notarized documents as being more valuable than an official document or an original document for that matter. Next, please. Um, so here are email addresses. That I'm sure that Michael and Tracy has already given uh, ours, but um, <clears throat> theirs, I mean. So if you need to contact any of our three offices, uh, you can contact at international admissions at international underscore admissions at bcit.ca uh, or the International Student Center, ISC underscore info at bcit.ca. Or if you need to contact the International Credential Evaluation Service, we, are, we can be contacted at ICES, INFO at bcit.ca. Thank you so much. Thank you, now, if there's any questions, we're happy to answer any questions if uh, anybody has any questions or uh, please feel free to put them in the chat. Michael just actually returned from a trip from the Middle East. So I'm sure he's dealing with some jet lag still. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm almost past it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but the... Uh... Now is our, our busy recruitment time. So we're actually reaching out to uh, students all over the world in virtual education fairs. And those occur at all times of the day and, and night. So I, I'm a little curious where most of our uh, guests are coming from. Oh, we have a question in the chat from Jasmine. Why don't I read it, Roger? And uh, Sure, go ahead. Decide who's gonna... So I'm in Vancouver with a tourist visa and very interested to enroll in one of your BCIT programs. What type of documents uh, BCIT will release to change my visa status to study student visa? And should I hire a lawyer for this process or it will be done automatically by BCIT? Tracy, I think we'll uh, ask you or Tamina to, to respond to this one. Uh, this would probably apply to a lot of uh, students who, if they are in Vancouver already, uh, they may be wondering how to proceed. So if you could maybe verbal uh, speak the uh, response rather than write it. I don't know how to reply to this in chat. I I'm think Tamina's already DC. answering. Yeah, she is answering it. But I think you can I'm actually uh, with degree from this explain place. it. Yeah, Tracy, if you can give us an, uh, just a quick overview of how students could apply. Well, Tracy, typically, if they're, if they're already here. I'll, I'll take the question, uh, Tracy. Thank you for your question, Jasmine. Um, and so because you're already here in, uh, in BC and you have a valid status in Canada being your visitor uh, status, uh, you have uh, both BCIT's part-time studies programs available to you as well as BCIT's full-time programs available to you. So it really depends on which type of program you're gonna be pursuing, whether it's gonna be the part-time studies program where you're gonna be studying course by course, or whether you're interested in one of BCIT's full-time programs where you're going to be submitting a formal application to admissions, where you're gonna be considered for a seat, and if you're offered a seat, you will be issued a letter of acceptance that you would use for your study permit application purposes. So 
I think I'm going to assume that you're going to go ahead and apply for a full-time program, which is what we've mainly been presenting on today. And if it's one of BCIT's full-time programs, as soon as you have your offer letter, uh, after you pay your commitment fee and you're offered your seat, you can use your letter of acceptance to apply for your study permit. And this study permit application is done through Immigration Canada and their online website. So you're fully able to apply for your study permit on your own, as long as you have all of the necessary documents that you need for the application. The only document that you will need from the school will be your letter of acceptance. Um, so you're fully able to uh, go ahead and apply for that uh, study permit on your own. But if you are looking to have a representative uh, or someone submit the application on your behalf, then you can reach out to an immigration lawyer here in Canada or a regulated Canadian immigration consultant to represent you on your application. And uh, if you have any further questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat and I'll be sure to uh, answer them. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Quinn. Uh, currently located in the U.S. with a valid student status. So that is uh, student status from the U.S. or from Canada, Quinn. Um, so you're a citizen of Vietnam. You want to apply to BCIT, but not sure what it looks like. Uh, so you can apply to BCIT, of course, from the U.S. And you would be applying. Uh, sorry, once you uh, once you are accepted to a program, you would just need to apply for a study permit from the Canadian government. Um, the second part of your question, though, you're interested in graduate full time programs. Uh, we have a very limited number of graduate programs, so uh, perhaps you would like to send an email and we can uh, explore this a little bit, uh, a little bit more. I'll put my email address in the in a private message to you. They mentioned that their status is regarding the U.S. So it is from the U.S. Okay, yeah. Yes. So you you will definitely have to apply for a, uh -huh. a Canadian study permit. But again, in terms of the actual program you'll apply to, um, you know, there may be a, a graduate program that you're interested in. However, one thing to understand, Quinn, that most students who come to BCIT, like 70% of our students, come with a bachelor degree and they come for our diploma level programs. It's very, very common because our two year diplomas are very intensive and um, they focus on skills for employment. And again, um, it gets you gets you a job fast after you graduate. Yeah, that's fine. So again, many students, uh, many Canadian students have Canadian degrees, bachelor degrees, and they still come to BCIT for our two year diplomas. It's a very high number, like 70%. Okay. EJ, how long is your letter offer for a program valid? Um, so once you are accepted to a program or you're offered a seat in the program, generally we give you uh, two weeks to make your commitment fee payment of $3,000. And that is essentially you accepting the program. So that the offer letter, I would say it's valid for two weeks. EJ, I hope that answers your question. If, if you want need me to elaborate, please just let me know. Uh, another question, can high school graduates directly apply for bachelor programs? So the most of the vast majority of the programs at BCIT start with a two-year diploma, and then you apply to the uh, bachelor degree after that, or sometime in your third or fourth uh, term. However, the, the civil engineering bachelor degree is the only program you apply to directly if you're coming from high school probably you would be applying to a, a diploma first um, anonymous attendee what kind of program are you interested in if it's a if it's a business program then we do have a bba and a bachelor of technology and accounting but again you have to start with a two-year diploma and then you could go on for one more year to finish the BBA or BTEC accounting. 
Okay, EJ, thanks for the follow-up question. Can you defer to next intake um, if I have an unexpected personal matter? Um, EJ, why don't you send me an email and uh, we'll have to look into this. I'll give you my direct um, email address so you can just send me an email. I, I, I sent it I sent it to um, Michael. Thank you, Roger, appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. I think I answered uh, Anonymous's question. Quinn has another question. Is there an in-person interview process for a study permit in Canada that requires me to be in my home country? No, Canada, uh, Tamina, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I'm not aware of any Canadian interview uh, required. I know, I think they do in the US, but um, not, oh yeah, you did say that. But no, we don't have that process in Canada, Quinn. The uh, processing time right now for uh, student study permits, uh, the last time I checked is about 12 weeks for students applying from outside of Canada. So if you are outside of Canada and you're applying for September, 2022, it's a good idea to apply as soon as possible. Um, and then if, once you're accepted, uh, get your application into the IRCC for your study permit. Okay, we still have another 10 minutes uh, planned here. So keep the questions coming. If anyone has any anything they uh, would like to ask us, now is a great time. Even if it's specific to a program, if you want to know something about a an area that you're interested in, feel free to answer, uh, ask that question. It doesn't have to be something related to study permits um, or letters of acceptance. It could be anything you'd like to know. Okay, as a prospective international student, can I combine two one-year programs? Uh, so the one-year program in global leadership and one year data analytics program. If you add them up, are both of them full time program with a total of 60 credits for two years? Tamina, I'm going to ask maybe if you could respond to this. Uh, it's a, I'm not sure. I think EJ might have sent it directly to me or you, can you see it, Tamina? Yeah, we can see it, Michael. Okay, good, good. Tamina's typing their answer, I think. Yeah, great. Thank you, Tamina. I think, I think. Uh, Michael, maybe uh, you should have. Did you send an email to uh, EJ? I think he has some specific question. Maybe he has a lot, some yeah, of yeah, I think, follow I think, up. I think Roger uh, passed yep. him on my, my Okay, email. good, good. Yeah, yeah, so just uh, in case you have more follow up questions. Yeah. Um, this question, I guess, is kind of hinting at the postgraduate work permit. Uh, Tracy, I don't know if you want to. I will leave that, that to Tamina because this is uh, should be answered by the regulated. Mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah, it seems to me that this he is asking about to combine the two program yeah. and the weather candy stacker and adding the lens, total lens of the program for that. But um, uh, I think it's a, it can be a case specific. And there is a lot more factors to that, depends on the program availability, uh, the gaps between the two. There's not just a straightforward answer. That's why I think I might have a little bit more uh, specific questions we have in order to answer the questions. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome, EJ. Yeah, you're welcome. Michael, I was wondering about your recent trip. And do you, it's probably been a while since you've been traveling and, and probably talking to people and being in a different country, but uh, do you feel like with, with the change in COVID and things, do you notice a, a marked difference? Not, not a great difference, Roger. That's a, that's a really good question. And, and I wondered before I left if it was going to have that much of an impact, but I think people are ready to get back to, you know, a, 
start returning to our, our normal state. Um, people were very open. The restrictions uh, in the country I was visiting were, were very little, very few restrictions. And people are wearing masks everywhere nowadays, so I think that's, that's a common thing. And um, yeah, I, I kind of felt like we're all aware that there's still a pandemic going on, but we also feel like it's coming, you know, it's, it's, it's lessening. And right. uh, yeah. I, I, well, there's definitely a shift, right? There's definitely a shift with regards to how we thought about the pandemic and, and the latest uh, variant, I think. Yeah. Do we have any, oh, there's a question from Pedro. Yeah. Just curious what oh, country that. I was oh. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was at an event in the uh, in Dubai in the United Arab United Arab Emirates, and uh, actually in early March I'll be off to Thailand and to Bangkok for some student recruitment fairs as well. So if anyone here is uh, from Bangkok, I can meet you in person at the education fair in uh, early March. But uh, returning to Canada now. Uh, I think a lot of the restrictions, as we heard today, are going to be removed. Uh, now you can do a lot more here in Vancouver and in Canada overall, or in BC, I should say. Um, and I, it really feels like we're returning to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Fully vaccinated. Yeah. You need to be fully vaccinated. No PCR, but you still need to have uh, rapid test. Antigen test. Yeah. Antigen, yeah. All I think right. you know, and even across the country, I mean, different provinces are responding differently, right, to the regulations. So mm -hmm. things things are different, definitely moving different in a, in a different direction. Definitely, yeah. Anyway, uh, if there is no more questions, oh, is that there is another one? No. Shall we put the slides to promote uh, the next? Two slice alumni, and there is also a big fall. There's a there's a contest, so just be sure register attending this, and you would have you will have a chance to win one of the three one thousand tuition prizes from BCIT. So the the link is at bcit.ca backslash contest hyphen promotions. Yeah, so uh, please do. Uh, visit that site and uh, complete the survey and enter your name for the uh, for the uh, for the draw for the one thousand dollar tuition prize. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Tracy, do you want to speak to this one again? Well, that's a connect with us. So there, there's a different ways to learn more about BCIT. So you can attend the info session like this one, and uh, do check out three hundred. 60 degree virtual campus highlights is really good one and connect with a program advisor if you have a further question about how to uh, how to check you or matching your education background your interest with uh, what program BCIT offer you can definitely do that and uh, yeah learn more about admissions and upgrading uh, different programs bridging programs and here you go, you actually still can all order a free copy of the 2022-23 BCIT view book. Yes, free copy, their copy. So, and get all the details uh, at bcit.ca slash experience. So there's so many ways to connect with BCIT. Is there, is there one more question in the... Uh, yeah, it's yes. a PG, PGWP uh, question Tamin is answering. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to say thank you to uh, everyone who helped organize the event tonight and uh, to my colleagues Tracy and Roger and uh, Tamina and Janice for helping out with the uh, questions. Um, yeah, the uh, if you're an international student and you're applying for September 2022, there are still many seats available. Um, although there are quite a few programs that have also filled to capacity. So uh, better to decide sooner than later. If you need help, 
reach out to any of us, uh, program advising or our international department, and we're always here to assist you. Thank you all very much. Have a nice evening. Thank Good you. Bye-bye.